now this is kind of like, okay, I've thrown down the gauntlet. What are you going to do? Time for Charlie to respond. This is a Storm Team 12 weather alert. Good afternoon, everybody. We do have our first tornado warning of the afternoon. This is for northeastern sections of Barton County. This will also include much of western and northern Ellsworth County. And you can see the red box actually goes up into extreme south, the western portions of Lincoln County. We're watching a storm that at least at this point in time capable of producing a tornado. We don't have anything confirmed on the ground just yet. There are several storm chasers and spotters in this area. And the last little bit of information that we got was a rotating wall cloud. Now keep in mind that's a lowering of the cloud base that often is a precursor to a developing tornado. It's not a guarantee that we're going to get a tornado, but that is something that we often look for in these types of situations. Now, the storm here is tracking northeast at 35 miles per hour. The area of greatest concern is right into this area here. So we'll put a quick storm track on it, and then we'll start to investigate the storm a little bit more for rotation. I think this is going to be very close to the Claflin area. Moving northeast at 35 would bring it up toward the Black Wolf area at 424. But I would say anybody north of Hollywood around the Lorraine area, Claflin to the west of Ellsworth. You need to be watching this storm very, very closely. Throughout the last hour, we've been getting several reports of large hail, in many cases larger than ping pong ball size. So we definitely know that the storms are capable of large hail. Now we'll take a little closer inspection here of what we have in terms of wind inside of this storm. I'm looking at here is the reds and the greens matching up right next to each other. As we zoom in just a little bit tighter, we're going to get a few more towns to pop up on here so you can see exactly exactly where this thing is rotating and it's in the northeast corner of Barton County. If you're watching us from Great Bend today, the danger is well northeast of you right now. You can see the red outline here. Claflin, of course, going to be right in through this general vicinity, but here's our rotation showing up very nicely well to the north and east of Hoisington. It's just to the, there's Claflin down here on Highway 4, so it's even north of there. So north of Claflin to the west and northwest of Holyrood. This is a rapidly rotating thunderstorm. We don't have any confirmation of anything on the ground. We'll hope that continues to be the case, but for right now, tornado warning in effect for northeastern sections of Barton County, and it does include western and northern sections of Ellsworth County. We're in pretty tight here, so let's back it out so we can get some more areas to pop up. And uh, once again, we'll take a closer inspection with our storm track to see who's next in line. Let's just see this in motion here as we continue to wait for additional information from the National Weather Service. These storms are quickly racing to the northeast. When they first started developing today at 45 miles per hour, now we have a movement at 35 on this storm coming out of northeast in Barton County. If you're in Ellsworth, you're officially under the tornado warning. The rotation, though, still kind of straddling the Barton Ellsworth County line right now, continuing to move to the northeast. Officially, Russell County not included in the tornado warning. We think any potential developing tornado out of this particular situation is going to stay just to the south in east of the Russell County vicinity. But this is a, a very dangerous storm. Even if we don't get a tornado out of it, we're certainly concerned about some very large hail too. So we'll bring in the hail indicators and give you an idea of what we might be looking at here as the storm continues to move to the northeast. There you can see we're getting estimated hail size close to one inch in diameter, but we've had a couple reports of it being a little larger than that. So be prepared for hail that might be as large as golf ball size. And then, of course, we have the rotation that's showing up with this storm in the northeastern sections of Ellsworth County. So we'll bring back in the, the wind mode of Doppler radar, and there you can see a tightening of the circulation, and that may be a precursor to a developing tornado here in northeastern sections of Barton County. So we'll zoom back in just a little bit tighter. Again, this is north of Claflin, so if you're just now tuning into our coverage, this is our first tornado warning of the day, and it does include northeastern Barton County, does include much of western and northern sections of Ellsworth County, and here's the circulation responsible for the tornado warning this afternoon. We'll let you see the replay of radar here, and notice right there in the last couple scans how the circulation appears to be getting a little bit better defined right here to the north of Claflin. We'll bring up to the current time. And I want to show you how far north of Claflin this would be. Of course, Claflin down here on the bottom part of your screen. So we're talking about a distance of about seven miles where we see the circulation on the radar to the north of Highway 4. This is going to pass to the northwest of Holyrood, but be watching it. If you're in Holyrood, you're in Lorraine, you're west of Ellsworth, this storm is going to be moving your way. Once again, this is radar indicated rotation. We don't have anything confirmed on the ground. We will hope that that does continue to be the case here as we go through the next 30 to 45 minutes or until the storm, of course, weakens. 
bring you back over to the regular mode of radar here. This is a very intense thunderstorm. Now I see we've got a new report coming out from Holyrood. So we've got a funnel cloud reported at 4 o'clock this afternoon, this near Holyrood, but the circulation appears to be just to the north and west of there. So watch this storm very, very closely. What do you do if you're in the path of this storm? Just a reminder here of the safety precautions. You want to get below ground if at all possible. That's always going to be the best protection in this kind of situation. You want to put yourself in a situation where you'll protect yourself from anything that can fall from above. You want to get under a workbench. If you can get under your stairwell, that's a good place to be because there's nothing heavy above a stairwell. So if you can get underneath of the staircase, go there now. If you can't get there, wrap yourself up in pillows and blankets and get under something sturdy that will protect protect you from anything that can fall from above. If you're in a situation where a basement is not an option, get into a small closet, a bathroom, put as many walls between you and the tornado as you possibly can because you want to protect yourself from anything that may penetrate the exterior walls. So keep that in mind here as we go through the next little while and we continue to track this tornado warning that's in effect for eastern Barton County. It does include much of western sections of Ellsworth County and this is our first funnel cloud report of the day, again near Holyrood, but the circulation that we have is just to the north and west of there. Let's back the radar out because I know that we probably have some concerned viewers in Ellsworth wondering, will this get there? And you can see Ellsworth, of course, right through here. So working about a distance of at least, well, this is probably going to be over 10 miles here. So let's real quick, we'll bring in our mile marker here and see how much distance we have between Ellsworth and the circulation. And you can see that we're looking at an area that's just about 13 to 14 miles back to the southwest of Ellsworth. And a funnel cloud has officially been reported with this particular storm as it continues to move to the northeast at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. So this is the whole purpose of our coverage this afternoon is to give you as much time to prepare for this kind of situation. And you probably easily have 15 if not 20 minutes to find shelter if you're in Ellsworth and you want to get below ground if at all possible. Again, this storm is has at least produced a funnel cloud. Now I understand we have Storm Team 12 storm chaser Ed O'Neill who's been watching some of the storms in Barton County and do we have Ed on the phone? Okay, Ed O'Neill joins yes. us now on the phone. Ed, go ahead and tell us where you are and what you're seeing this afternoon. South of Holly Road, headed east, uh, going to get uh, hooked up on Highway 56 and then head north towards Ellsworth. About 15 minutes ago, I did see at a distance what I believe to be a funnel cloud, but I wasn't sure because it was close enough to make out the rotation. Right now, from my position, uh, a second little cell has moved in with precipitation, kind of blocking my view of that area, what looked was a lorry. So I'm not seeing that right at the moment, but earlier I did. Okay, so Ed, you can at least confirm that funnel cloud report that we had near Holyrood, correct? Yeah, yes, yes, definitely. Okay, that's Storm Team 12 Storm Chaser Ed O'Neill. If we go back over to the radar real quick, the reason why Ed's having a little bit of a difficult time trying to see exactly what's taking place, we've had a couple storms merge here with the thunderstorm that has produced the tornado warning this afternoon. So some of that rain obscuring the view from where Ed's at. And again, he's coming into the Hollyroot area, has a really good position to see if something develops out of this. But because we've had storm merger this afternoon, that's going to cause some problems here and potentially obscure any additional view if the tornado does develop in the next five or ten minutes. But he did confirm, as you heard live on the air, he was able to see that funnel cloud report. So the picture behind me, that again is Ed O'Neill's video coming in live on the air. He's got some darkening skies there. We can't pick out a tornado from this view here. But if something does drop out of the sky, Ed's going to be in a pretty good spot. We should be getting information from him as he continues to travel along and follow these storms that are now in western sections of Ellsworth County. If you're in Ellsworth, the city of Ellsworth, we're trying to give you as much time to prepare for this as possible because you are officially under the tornado warning and the storm continues on that northeasterly track. What do you do if you're in the path of the storm? Basements are the best places to go. If you're out driving around this afternoon, uh, you want to find a safe place. We don't often encourage people to try to outrun a tornado. That's not a good idea in these types of situations. A big challenge today, these storms are moving at close to 40 miles per hour, so they're not wasting any time at all. You want to get below ground. You want to get to a small closet, interior room, put as many walls between you and the tornado as you possibly can. Let's go back to the full screen view. I see we got a new bit of information popping up here on the screen. 
And uh, let's see here. This just coming in, looks like to me just west of the Ellsworth area. Funnel cloud uh, now reported at 405. I think that's probably, I think the area of circulation is still back here. So we'll switch back over into the wind mode here of Doppler radar so you can see what's going on. And it's a little bit more difficult to pick out exactly where this thing is. Let's see if we can move the radar around just a little bit and get a little different idea of where the circulation could be. Again, earlier we had it in northeastern sections of Barton County, but now it's most likely up here to the north of Holyrood, very close to the Lorraine area, straight west of Ellsworth. So if you're in Ellsworth, you need to be seeking shelter immediately as this continues to be a very dangerous thunderstorm moving to the northeast. And uh, this is a new severe thunderstorm warning for central Lincoln County. This goes until 5 o'clock this afternoon. Storm there moving northeast at 35 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and kind of set the stage for you this afternoon as we continue to deal with a tornado warning that is in a, that still is in effect for Pensa Ellsworth County, northeastern Barton County as well. And just really quick here, I want to back this out so I can show you that we do have that severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Lincoln County. You can see we have additional storms popping up south and east of Great Bend, more storms up into Lincoln County. Meteorologist Rodney Price standing by at the Chaser desk with some additional information. That's right, Ross. We're continuing to watch those storms that are over parts of central Kansas around the uh, Barton County and Ellsworth County area. Uh, we're looking at a number of uh, chaser feeds here this afternoon uh, coming into us from Ed O'Neill as we talked to earlier in the afternoon. Mikey Gribble also uh, watching the storms along with Scott Roberts and they are in those uh, general areas here uh, this afternoon. Matt, was that what was that? We've got Ed O'Neill on the phone right now. He's uh, in there in that area of uh, Barton County and uh, Ellsworth County. Uh, Ed, tell us where you're at now and what you're seeing from your vantage point right now. I'm uh, just southwest of Holyrood. Uh, it is a little hard to see the area of uh, rotation or the reported funnel cloud, but due to some precipitation between it and me, but I can faintly make out a, a lowering off to my north. And uh, again, uh, it looked like a, uh, a white funnel, but uh, like I say, it's very difficult to see, so I don't want to say that it was. But uh, I can definitely see a lowering in the distance through the rain. Yeah, we definitely see a lot of that rain. Ross was pointing out we were getting some storm mergers up in that area, a lot of precipitation. So some of those features we're seeing on your uh, stream this afternoon, really hard to pick out at this point, but uh, got a good set of eyes there in Ed O'Neill. Ed, stay safe, keep on that storm there. We'll continue to watch that uh, report here as we go through the uh, course of the next little bit. We're gonna sit it on over to Ross back in the studio, Ross. Well, Rodney, I can count at least uh, two, maybe three funnel cloud reports that we've had in just the last 15 minutes with this particular storm now moving through western sections of Ellsworth County. We'll get back in just a little bit tighter and we do owe you a storm track to let you know some updated information on when this storm will be arriving and it's getting very close to Ellsworth still officially in the tornado warning. We're just about out of the woods at least for right now in northeastern sections of Barton County. The core of the storm, this deep shade of red that you see straight west of Ellsworth is where we're probably dealing with some very heavy rainfall. We could be looking at hailstones of at least golf ball size with this particular storm, and I'll let you see the radar in motion. It's basically for those areas around Ellsworth to the west of there, and especially now to the north of Ellsworth. This storm's going to be coming your way, and each one of these little icons popping up that looks like a tornado, those are funnel cloud reports that we've had in just the last 15 minutes. So this continues to be an extremely dangerous storm, producing several funnel cloud reports. We've got Ed O'Neill in this area, but the problem is we're getting a lot of precipitation that's wrapping around this storm and it's making it extremely difficult to see exactly what is taking place. We'll switch back over into the wind mode. What we're looking for, greens and reds right next to each other. And based on what I'm looking at here, I don't really see that classic definition like we sometimes see with these isolated thunderstorms that pop up produce tornadoes. But we have to go with the eyewitness accounts that we're getting today, and that continues to be funnel cloud reports coming in in the last 15 to 20 minutes. You can see one here that was close to Holyrood, another one about three miles to the west of Ellsworth. And now we'll take the radar and shift it just a little bit farther north 
and then we'll put a storm track on where I believe the strongest circulation to be. Most of these storms moving at 30 to 35 miles per hour and from the area of rotation that we're looking at there moving northeast at close to 30. We show an estimated arrival time into Ellsworth here just within the next 10 minutes and if that storm continues to the north of town then we're talking about potential impacts along I-70. We hope that this storm will weaken some uh, but for right now, we still have a tremendous amount of circulation with the storm, still getting some very large hail reports with it, too. And once again, in the last 15 to 20 minutes, we've also had those occasional funnel cloud reports. As far as the hail size is concerned here, our computer uh, estimating that there could be some hail definitely larger than one inch in diameter. We've had a lot of reports of that today. That's this dark blue swath that we're looking at here, the computer on its own trying to estimate the hail size. And that goes right along with some of the reports that we got about 45 minutes ago, some large hail that was up to golf ball size, and we still believe there to be some hail that could be that large with this storm now to the west of the Ellsworth area. For those up in Lincoln County, you too are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Some pretty strong thunderstorm activity occurring there just to the west and southwest of Lincoln. Watch, uh, let you see the radar in motion here because those storms are also pushing to the northeast at close to 40 miles per hour. There you can see it looks like the core of the storm headed up toward the Lincoln area. The rain's going to start picking up in intensity. I wouldn't be surprised if you got some quarter size hail out of this storm passing through southern and central portions of Lincoln County. Certainly a very dangerous storm there. This is the only tornado warning that we have out there today for right now, and that's the one here in Ellsworth County. There could be additional tornado warnings. We're certainly looking at that potential at least for another two to three hours. And then as we shift our view back down into portions of Barton County, where earlier we did have some large hail reported around Great Bend and Hoisington, now the strong Longer thunderstorms are to the east of Great Bend, continuing to move northeast at about 30 to 40 miles per hour. These are strong thunderstorms, but no warnings in effect for those areas for right now. And then we had some other isolated storms farther south down into portions of Stafford County. This storm to the east of Byers in northern Pratt County doesn't look like it's close to severe, but something we'll continue to monitor. So for right now, if you're just joining our coverage here as we uh, continue to monitor the tornado warning that's in effect for Ellsworth County, Coming up on 4.30 this afternoon, this tornado warning was issued about 15, 20 minutes ago. And uh, now we have a storm chaser reporting a tornado three miles to the northwest of Holyrood. That again from Ellsworth County. And that is uh, certainly a very dangerous situation that we're looking at now for those residents of Ellsworth. If you're watching us today from Ellsworth, Western Ellsworth County, you have the most intense thunderstorm right now at this four o'clock hour. You need to be getting below ground. If you're not already there, you want to get underneath something sturdy for, to protect yourself from anything that could fall from above. There are a lot of smaller things that can often be overlooked in these types of situations, such as putting on shoes, Make sure you, if you're on medic, medication, make sure you have that because you want to be prepared to lose everything in these types of situations. You want to have bottled water and you're kind of running out of time here in Ellsworth. If the storm can move in from the southwest, we've had a couple different reports of funnel clouds. And then most recently, we got that report of a tornado with the storm to the north of Holyrood moving to Ellsworth. So this is a dangerous storm, large hail, likely with it, an isolated tornado where we continue to deal with funnel clouds and now the tornado report just to the north of Hollywood. Rodney Price standing by with more from the Chaser desk. All right, thanks a lot, Ross. I just got off the phone with a Storm Team 12 Chaser, Tony Lawback. He is up there right in the Ellsworth County area. Last check just a couple of minutes ago, he's not able to send us any video here this afternoon, but he did report that from where he was sitting right now, he was not able to see anything touching down. Did look like a lowering there, uh, not too far away from him, but uh, otherwise he has not seen anything as of yet and he will be good to get back with us if something does change on that. We continue to watch our feeds here. Ed O'Neill still in that area following the storm this afternoon, and we've got Ed on the phone here this afternoon. Ed, are you able to see anything new there from your vantage point uh, there near uh, Hollywood? No. Well, I'm, I'm really rude right now. Okay. I was looking up to where the tornado report was, but if there was a tornado precipitation, it was rain-wrapped. I couldn't tell. barely see in the base of the storm age a circular pattern so there is rotation but no i cannot confirm that there was a tornado okay yeah it is extremely hard to tell here this afternoon again there's a lot of precipitation going on and we could have that vantage point there where ed is at where the rain is wrapped around any kind of circulation blocking the view of any potential tornado nonetheless though with that tornado warning in effect 
definitely want to make sure if you're in that uh, area of uh, Ellsworth County, specifically near Ellsworth and communities surrounding there, definitely want to continue with your tornado precautions. Ross. We're also getting some additional information out of Lincoln County of some very large hail. And just while Rodney was speaking, we did get an additional report of some large hail associated with the Ellsworth County storm. This hail report uh, just coming in in the last little while. We'll bring up the information here for you. That's this blue box that's popped up with the storm back to the west southwest of Ellsworth. There you can see quarter size hail at 417 this afternoon. So I'll emphasize the fact even if we don't get a tornado out of this storm or at least an additional tornado, Large hail, something we're definitely going to have to deal with and be concerned about as the storm continues to slip just to the west northwest of Ellsworth. But we want everybody to be safe. We hope that there's not an additional tornado out of this storm. Going to be really tough for the chasers to see because there's a lot of precipitation wrapping around it. But I'll let you see the radar in motion once again as we continue to approach 430 on a Sunday afternoon. If you're just now coming across our coverage, this is a tornado warning that was issued about 30 minutes ago in Ellsworth County up into southern Lincoln County too. Barton County now looks like it's just about out of the tornado warning. In fact, that may be scaled back here momentarily, but the rotation is getting very close to the Ellsworth area, and so we definitely want everybody in shelter as the storm continues to move in from the southwest. We'll switch back over to the wind mode. Just hasn't been very easy to pick out even for us. The purple that you see on here, that's where the radar is having a little bit of a tough time trying to figure out is the wind coming in or blowing away from the radar. It's what we call range folding, but the important part here is that we still have some indication of green and red matching up there with the storm to the west of Ellsworth, so there's still enough rotation with it to keep the tornado warning going. I believe we have a storm shot to share with you. Uh, this is from Kimberly Hopkins from near Canopolis. That would be to the east of Ellsworth in Ellsworth County, and you definitely can't miss what you're looking at there. That definitely looks like a funnel cloud on the far right side of the picture. This is going to be your heavy rain curtain. This is the rain free base. If you've watched us track storms before and you're familiar with Kansas thunderstorms, you've probably heard us reference that time and time again. But where the precipitation stops, this is the updraft. This is where all the wind is going up into the storm, and this is where tornadoes like to develop out of. So on the right part of the picture, the heavy rain, the quarter size hail, even even larger than that is falling in here, but it's over in this part of the storm that you typically will find the wall cloud, perhaps a funnel cloud, which is what we're seeing in this example. And then sometimes we get a tornado that develops out of that. The difference between funnel cloud, tornado, funnel clouds are not in contact with the ground tornadoes are. So this is a very dangerous situation unfolding here in Ellsworth County. The sirens have probably been sounding in Ellsworth now for quite some time because we've had at least a couple different reports of funnel clouds, at least one tornado report. That's the icon that you see down here just to the north of Holyrood. We believe that circulation is quite uh, quite a bit uh, farther along than that now, probably getting uh, closer to the Ellsworth area, but that report at 412 this afternoon, a report of a tornado that was in progress to the north of Holyrood. But once again, we believe the circulation is now up in this area, just to the west of Ellsworth. So anybody that's north of Ellsworth on Highway 14, up toward the Interstate 70 junction, this is really the area that we need to be most concerned about for additional tornado development. There you see that northeasterly movement continuing. Matt, I'm sorry, you'll have to repeat that. Okay, we've got a second storm shot again from Kimbrey, and uh, this to me looks like a little bit tough to say. This could be the wall cloud. We're at such a distance here, it might be tough to pick this out. I'm not going to say that this is the tornado, because that would certainly be a very large one if that were the case. But this could be our wall cloud, and perhaps maybe a tornado developing at the bottom of that. But from Canopolis looking back to the west, there's going to be several miles there from the storm, so a little bit from a farther vantage point there to see exactly what is taking place. So ping pong ball slice hail now reported just to the south of Sylvan Grove. That's part of our storm getting up there into Lincoln County. So we'll shift our view because we don't want to leave residents of Lincoln County out of this. Certainly a severe thunderstorm warning continues for your area and a very dangerous one too. That's the blue box that's popping up there just to the north of Interstate 70. That's going to be our ping pong ball slice hail coming in in just the last little while. We've got some other intense thunderstorms west and north of Lincoln, but the large hail looks to me like it's occurring just to the north of Interstate 70 there. So keep that in mind here as we continue to watch these storms. The only tornado warning that's in effect right now is for Ellsworth County, and this is a very dangerous storm. The threat is just about out of Barton County now, so this warning may be scaled back just a little bit as we continue to watch the storm move up to the west and north of Ellsworth. There's another strong thunderstorm just to the south of Claflin. It's not severe right now. 
now and then you can see some heavy rainfall falling to the west of Lyons on the Barton Rice County line. Don't have any reason to believe that there's any real large hail in there, but you might find some dime size hail possible there in between Grape Bend and over into western sections of Rice County with that thunderstorm that continues underway here at uh, now again approaching 430 on a Sunday afternoon. But we're in continuous coverage here. Got a storm close to Ellsworth, has a history of producing tornadoes. Uh, Quarter sized hail, six northwest of Ellsworth. Okay, so that's gonna be this this report yep. here that's just popped up in the last little while. Getting some large hail out of this storm, especially to the west and northwest of Ellsworth. There you see at 420 this afternoon, quarter size hail reported from Ellsworth County. Have a lot of hail reports trickling in this afternoon, and then we've had those occasional funnel cloud reports. The only tornado report that we've had confirmed come through the National Weather Service into our weather center here is this one that was about three miles to the north of Holyrood, and now that circulation up here toward the Ellsworth area. I'll switch over. Sometimes you'll see us refer to debris ball. We're looking to see is the tornado picking anything up, and we're at such a distance from the radar that I wouldn't expect that we're probably going to see anything here, and I don't, so that's certainly some good news. We don't want to see any debris picked up by the tornado. That would indicate potentially something larger than what we've had reported so far this afternoon, but we are uh, certainly at such a distance from the radar coming out of Wichita that the radar beam is hitting the storm high enough that it's just not that easy to pick out the greens and reds matching up next to each other, but that's a good thing. That would indicate that even if there is a tornado in this storm, it should be fairly small. Don't have anything that really stands out to me all that well here on the radar, but we still have at least some strong enough circulation. The eyewitness accounts coming out of Ellsworth County would continue to suggest that there's still a significant danger here, especially in the city of Ellsworth, of a potential funnel cloud, perhaps a brief tornado. Ed O'Neill is still watching the storm from Ellsworth County. There you can see Ed's video right behind me, darkening skies. We can't pick anything out of that particular shot there, other than it looks like we have a rain-free base. That's the back part of the storm, the updraft, where all the wind is going up into the storm, where the rain is falling, that's considered the downdraft, air coming down, precipitation falling, but Ed's got his camera on the updraft part of the storm, so if this is gonna produce a tornado, you're gonna get to see it right here live on the air. That's why we don't want you to go out and try to look for it for yourself. Stay in storm shelter, keep our coverage on. We'll continue to bring live pictures, live video as we get it into the storm center to keep you and your family safe. But we were dealing with isolated storms that started firing up at about three o'clock this afternoon. And now we continue with that tornado warning for Western Ellsworth County. We have a new storm shop coming into the storm center now. We'll bring up that for you. This is a little closer vantage point of what looks like uh, you know, it looks kind of like a tower there, if you will. It's jagged, though. The bottom part of this cloud picture, if you will, is certainly very jagged, and that's good news. I think what we're looking at there is a wall cloud. We don't know because this is a still picture, whether it's rotating or not, but this from near Holyrood out of Ellsworth County, where we've had at least two different reports of funnel clouds, at least one confirmed tornado that did touch down, and what you were looking at in that picture, I would certainly call a wall cloud but without watching it in real time and seeing video with it, it is kind of tough to tell. Back over to the radar, we'll let you see it in motion. Once again, our tornado warning does continue for western and northern sections of Ellsworth County. We still have some strong rotation being indicated very close to Ellsworth right now. So if you're watching our coverage in Ellsworth, please stay in your storm shelter until we get the storm past the city and it's going to be a little, little while before that does happen. You can see the red outline goes up into southern Lincoln County. Now check this out. Barton County now cleared from the tornado warning. No surprise there. The threat has now pushed entirely into Ellsworth County. So good news there for the residents of Barton County. You are now officially out of the tornado warning. But once again, the circulation to me still looks like it's right in this area just to the west of Ellsworth. We'll bring back in the wind mode of Doppler radar because what we're really looking for from a meteorological standpoint, we, we're trying to find where the greens and the reds match up next to each other because that helps us identify where the strongest circulation is and we just can't see that here because we're up against at least one significant challenge we can't do anything about and that's the distance that Ellsworth is from the Wichita National Weather Service Doppler radar so we're hitting it at such a high elevation it's really tough to pick out some of those lower features but based on the information that we're getting from chasers spotters and even from you, you're sending in pictures and what we're looking at this afternoon would continue to suggest that the tornado warning does need to continue for central and northern sections of Ellsworth County. 
we're getting a lot of large hail reported with this storm too. And it looks like just to recap some of the most recent hail reports that we got at 420 today, we had quarter size hail reported that this would be just to the northwest of Ellsworth and back to the southwest of Ellsworth. We got a report of some quarter size hail at 417 today. So in addition to the threat for perhaps an isolated tornado that could develop out of the storm. We've got the large hail, we've got the blinding rainfall, and that's just now starting to impact I-70. So motorists along I-70 traveling through northern Ellsworth County will probably have to slow it way down and wait for this tremendous storm to pass the interstate because we're going to be dealing with some blinding rainfall for at least another 20 to 30 minutes. The heaviest of the storm hasn't even made it 70 just yet, so the rain will certainly be picking up in intensity there. Something we'll have to continue to follow as we can continue along here on a Sunday afternoon. We'll take the radar, go back up into Lincoln County, and just to show you that we continue to monitor for some large hail out of Lincoln County. There have been at least a couple different reports of hail larger than one in diameter. And as we go up north of I-70 now, you can see some pretty heavy rainfall that's passed through Lincoln. There's a strong thunderstorm core back to the southwest of town. I would expect in Lincoln you might see some hail up to one inch in diameter. This stronger part of the thunderstorm coming out of northern Ellsworth County is also moving to the northeast. So watch out in the southeast corner of Lincoln County. We could see an additional warning here issued for large hail if the storm continues to hold together. I'll take you back to a statewide view of the radar because if you've been following our coverage now for 30 to 45 minutes, it's been a while since we've looked at the overall picture. We don't have anything going on in Wichita. It could be several hours even before we have much of a chance. We do have some thunderstorms that have popped up there in the southeast corner of Stafford County. There's our tornado warning for Ellsworth County. Then you get north of I-70 into Lincoln County, a severe thunderstorm warning there. And then as you get up into parts of northern Kansas, where we do have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect, we get more isolated storms that are showing up there across portions of Mitchell County, and then it continues up into southern Nebraska. So we're dealing with very isolated thunderstorms, but those are sometimes the most dangerous because they don't have anything to interfere with them. So all the moisture coming in from the south can feed right into the stronger storms, which can keep them going sometimes for hours on end. For right now, the most significant thunderstorm is that one that's in Ellsworth County with a history of producing not only large hail, but also we've had the report of at least one tornado that did make it down to the ground. That's the official definition of a tornado, and that was just to the north of the Holyrood area. But the circulation now is quite a bit farther along than what we had that initial report there. Looks to me like it's right over top of Ellsworth, just to the north of there, and eventually we'll be moving up into the southeast corner of Lincoln County. So we're just now past 430 here on a Sunday afternoon. We've been in continuous coverage because of this tornado warning for Ellsworth County. The extreme danger that we've had with brief funnel clouds an isolated tornado. The storm has a history of producing of at least one in western sections of Ellsworth County. And once again, radar in motion shows the movement there to the northeast at 40 miles per hour. Isolated storms, very dangerous. This entire area under a tornado watch that will take us until 11 o'clock tonight. So additional storms producing not only isolated to not be ruled out as we continue through the rest of the Sunday afternoon and into Sunday evening. Tornado warning here for Ellsworth County. I think we're coming up on the expiration time here. Bring up that information from the National Weather Service. There you see the tornado warning until 445. So we have less than 15 minutes to go and it does include Ellsworth. It does include Canopolis and the storm now just to the north of Ellsworth. We haven't had any reports of damage to my knowledge. We're monitoring information that's coming in from the National Weather Service law enforcement. The fire department often goes out and spots storms for us too. And I do see a report of a train spot reporting a funnel cloud. This was 10 miles to the northwest of Holyrood. Same thunderstorm. Same circulation, isolated storm passing over Ellsworth to me. Now it looks like the circulation is probably either west of Ellsworth or just to the north of there. And we'll zoom back in just a little bit tighter so we can see if we can see any kind of notch or circulation showing up. And it's just been very difficult to pick anything out with this. I believe Rodney Price is standing by with some additional information from the Chaser desk. That's right, Ross. Uh, we're continuing to watch Ed O'Neill's uh, feed. He is approaching Ellsworth from the south and west on K156. And we've got Ed on the phone here. Uh, there's the video that you can see from Ed's camera right now as he approaches Ellsworth from the south and west. Ed, give us your exact location right now and tell us what you're seeing there. It looks like a, a pretty a decent wall cloud that has developed here. Yeah, there has been a nice wall cloud. I'm probably three to four miles southwest of Ellsworth. Uh, there's been 
I was fairly close to it. There's a moderate rotation. Uh, several tail clouds uh, extend from the uh, wall cloud that uh, some people might think would be a funnel cloud, but they really weren't rotating. They, they were tail clouds. Uh, but right now, I uh, just above me to my northwest, there is a very brief, short funnel. Uh, it's come out for just a second, but it's dissipating right now. Okay. Yeah, we're continuing to watch your feed there, Ed, and uh, we can see it here for ourselves. Lowerings are kind of ragged at this point, but I did yes, see what you yeah. were talking about earlier with the, it was almost like the, uh, it was a tail cloud. It, it almost looked like a funnel. It was more horizontal, though, than vertical. So right, that's, right. What, yeah, that's what could definitely lead to some confusion there if you're out and about driving and you see this little sharp point, you might think that it is a yeah, funnel. Yeah. But uh, definitely a ragged wall cloud that we have, maybe losing a little bit of its definition there. But uh, yes, Ed heading into the uh, Ellsworth area right now, driving to the north and east, continuing to watch this business end of the storm here in parts of Ellsworth County. Can also tell you that Storm Team 12 chaser Tony Lawback is approaching Ellsworth from the north on K-14, and he's moving right into the Ellsworth County area as we speak. We've got other chasers in the field here this afternoon. We've got uh, Storm Team 12 chaser Eric Lynn. He is on that storm that is in Pratt County. In fact, at last check there, uh, his location there, he's just off to the uh, northwest, northeast rather, of Pratt along uh, K-61, uh, right near, uh, uh, just to the northeast there uh, and to the southwest of Preston. Right now, he's watching an additional storm that's continuing to uh, develop there. But you can see here, still watching Ed O'Neill's feed here, where we've got that tornado warning in effect for Ellsworth County. And you can still see that ragged wall cloud that we have appearing on his feed at this hour. Very dangerous storm. Tornado warning does continue for about another nine minutes there until 445. So we'll watch his feed along with the rest of the information that we're getting here at the Storm Team 12 Chaser Desk. We'll throw it back now to Ross. All right, Rodney, just recapping the latest information that we have in the Storm Center. The warning for Ellsworth County continues for about another eight minutes, and then we'll see what happens. The National Weather Service deciding to do with this thunderstorm, producing some very significant rotation. We've had several funnel clouds reported. The last report of a funnel cloud was three miles to the northwest of Ellsworth. We are picking out a little bit of a notch showing up almost right over Ellsworth, and this storm is still moving to the northeast. We'll bring back on the wind mode of Doppler radar once again as we try to and analyze these storms live on the air as the data continues to come in. We are getting a little bit better definition now of the circulation. You can see where we have the red. This would be the wind blowing away from the Wichita radar, and then the green would indicate where the wind is blowing in. And notice how we don't have bright green and bright red matching right up next to each other. So this is sort of a broad circulation that we're dealing with. And when you put these two numbers together, we're dealing with almost 50 mile per hour winds of circulation that we've sampled here from the radar. So we're looking at an area that's just to the west, northwest of Ellsworth. We definitely know that there is a wall cloud. Remember, wall clouds are lowering of the cloud bases and then tornadoes sometimes develop out of the wall cloud. Not always. You know, I've seen a lot of storms produce some very well-defined wall clouds that never produce a tornado, so it's not a guarantee. Even though we talk a lot about the wall cloud, not always a guarantee that you're going to get a tornado out of the storm. But if you're in Ellsworth, if you're north of Ellsworth along Highway 14, you're north, maybe on 156, maybe as far north as one uh, will make that I-70, certainly running across the northern part of Ellsworth County. You need to be watching this storm very, very closely. We've had our eyes on it now for at least 30 to 45 minutes, and we just haven't been able to pick out any real substantial circulation. But now with the latest scan of radar coming in, you can't miss it there. It's just to the west of Ellsworth. We'll bring you up to the current time and we'll put a distance on this so you know exactly the area that we're talking about and exactly how far west of downtown Ellsworth we're talking about. Two to three miles. That's it. So it's very close and hopefully this storm will pass right over Ellsworth, never produce a tornado. Hopefully we don't get any damage. But in addition to the threat for wall clouds and tornadoes, we've had a number of reports of large hail coming in today and we still believe there to be some large hail falling with this storm as it continues to move through Ellsworth and especially to the north of there over the northern part of the county. So we are coming up on the expiration time 445. The tornado warning is set to expire for Ellsworth County, but you can definitely see the circulation, the notch that's showing up on the radar, how this works. And uh, let me 
bring in uh, so I can telestrate here exactly what we're looking at uh, when it comes to how these storms operate. So the, the storm basically is circulating around such like this. So the winds are blowing. Well, it'd be counterclockwise coming around the storm. You have warm, moist air that flows up into the storm, and this is the circulation that we're talking about, and it's basically right over Ellsworth, maybe a mile to the north of there. Matt, go ahead and tell me again what you've got for us. Okay, back to Ed's video here. That's the picture that you see just behind me and darkening skies. Ed's had a wall cloud. We've been able to see it quite well from his feet coming in today and we have not been able to pick out any tornado. Now, Ed has told us at least a couple different times he's been able to see the funnel cloud. We've had a number of reports of those today, but for right now, at least in his video, if you're looking to see where's the tornado, we don't see it there in his live picture. That is certainly some good news. A lot of storm shots trickling in this afternoon. We encourage you to send in pictures, but we want you to do it from a safe location, and that's not going out on your front doorstep and trying to see, especially if you're not a trained spotter. Now, this picture that you're looking at, this is from Jessica Bowlby near Lorraine, and what you're looking at there looks to me like it's a lowering, a wall cloud, if you will. Once again, the heavy rain over to the right part of the screen, the wall cloud being there in the center part, and uh, they are issuing a new tornado warning. This is going to take us until 530 today. And National Weather Service telling us that the tornado, uh, a potential tornado, a storm capable of producing a tornado located right over Ellsworth, moving northeast at about 35 miles per hour. And just checking some of the latest information that we're getting from the National Weather Service, and we can confirm that too, that the storm has increased now in the circulation. So we're seeing a little bit of tightening here taking place just to the north of Ellsworth. So even though we have not had a continual tornado on the ground, we still believe there to be enough circulation with this storm in Ellsworth County for there to be additional tornado reports. Not a guarantee. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, you can have sometimes the best looking storm on radar. Looks like it's going to do something and it never does. And every storm is a little different. So we'll back the radar out just so we can bring in this new tornado warning because I believe that it's probably going to stretch over Let's see here. The tornado warning there does include Canero, and it does go up just to the edge of Saline County. So if you're watching our coverage from Salina, wondering is the storm going to get to your location, going to be several, several minutes before it does that. But we do owe you here a radar loop so you can see for yourself. There's the circulation now just to the north of Ellsworth. There's still some heavy rain, some hail coming in to the southwest of that location. But notice we're starting to see that better definition in the notch just to the north of Ellsworth. So that's the rotation that we're concerned about. Tornado warning now till 530 does include much of northeastern Ellsworth County and extends up into southeastern sections of Lincoln County. This is a very dangerous storm. It's part of just two or three storms that we have out there today. This is not a long line of storms underway isolated and when they're out there by themselves they get access they can access all the moisture that they want and sometimes they keep going for hours on end not saying that this one will do that but it's certainly a potential something we'll continue to watch for there Merrill you got some new information well, I just want to kind of uh, put things together here because we've got things that are really fitting together very well with that rotation indication on radar now you can see uh, the area where we've got the reds and the greens just to the north of Ellsworth showing up very, very close together. In fact, what we call gate to gate shear in some portions of the storm. Okay, that's the Doppler radar portion of it, the winds that Ross has been showing you on our other system. Now, let's go over to the more conventional view that we have of severe thunderstorm activity. Well, any rainfall, really. And look, there's the notch that Ross was just pointing out to you on the regular radar. They are coexistent, which means that is the best place that we could be looking at them. We are looking at the potential for tornadic development. So we're really looking now just to the north of Ellsworth and then on off to the northeast with that new tornado warning that goes until 530 for northeastern portions of Ellsworth County and the southeastern portion of Lincoln County. With the current movement to the northeast, it would not include, and the warning itself does not include, the town of Lincoln, but it does the southeastern portions of Lincoln County. So if you're anywhere around and especially especially to the northeast of Ellsworth and on up into southeastern Lincoln County. It's time to take those tornado precautions right now. Ross? 
And Merrill, just seeing some new information from the National Weather Service, they're able to see what's called an overshooting top. So basically the updraft part of the storm is going up so fast it's able to get above the jet stream at 30, 40,000 feet into the air. And that's something that we look for in the intensity of the storm. That tells us that this is an intensifying storm and it is definitely now just to the northeast of Ellsworth. But let me point something else out. If you look back to the southwest of Ellsworth, we still have a lighting. There may still be some very large hail into Ellsworth from the southwest and one of the most recent reports of hail that we got from Ellsworth County was a report, I believe this is of some quarter size hail. We'll zoom back in just a little bit tighter there on Ellsworth County because this is still the most dangerous storm that we have out there today. You can see some other isolated storms popping up into Reno County and we'll address those in just a second. But here is one of the most recent reports from just north of Ellsworth, a report of some quarter size hail that did come in just a couple minutes ago. There you this afternoon quarter hail there and there's still a lot of hail potential back here to the southwest of town. So if you're in this area southwest of Ellsworth on Highway 156, you're perhaps in one of the areas experiencing some of that larger hail right now. The rotating part of the storm looks to be just north and east of Ellsworth. How far? Well, let's bring in our mile marker so we can get an indication here of what we're looking at from downtown Ellsworth. We're looking at a three to four miles northeast of town, continuing up 156 toward the I-70 junction. This is a very significant situation here, a storm that has been gathering intensity, the rotation, the circulation looking so much better than it did even 15 or 20 minutes ago go and that would concern us for the potential of an additional developing tornado out of this storm. So this is where the main event is taking place right now. Canero's over here. Looks like the threat's going to stay to your northwest, but anybody throughout northeastern Ellsworth County needs to be moving to a place of safety if you have not done so already. Just a reminder, many of you who are from Kansas, you already know what to do, but there are a lot of smaller things that can often be overlooked. Don't worry about opening the windows to your house. That will not do any good. Make sure you put on a, a nice pair of shoes, something that will protect your feet. If you were to take a direct hit from a tornado, we don't want you out walking around barefoot or in flip-flops. You really need to have a good pair of shoes on to protect your feet. If you're on medication, have that handy. Bottled water, you want to be prepared for the worst, and certainly as we do and everybody does we hope for the best but based on the radar situation now the eyewitness accounts that have been trickling in this afternoon we've had several reports of funnel clouds and the most recent scan on Doppler radar would indicate the storm has gotten stronger, the rotation getting stronger as well. So if you're in the path of the storm, get to the basement, get under something sturdy to protect yourself from anything that could fall from above. What do you do if you don't have a basement? Closets, bathrooms, good places to be. Stay as far away from windows and doors as you possibly can and put as many walls between you and the tornado as you can. Rodney Price standing by with more from the Chaser Desk. Well, Ross, we've got an interesting vantage point now from our Storm Team 12 uh, camera. We look at here Capitol Federal Skycam 12 from the Salina area and I will apologize in advance. We're having some intermittent issues with the camera. Sometimes the picture will drop out, but we're looking at the camera here. The view there where we're looking at is to the west and west southwest. So what you've got in the uh, camera's view right now, especially in the area pretty much right in the middle, you can see quite a bit of heavy rain that's coming down. Immediately to its left, we've got kind of a rain-free area. Now we're several miles away from that storm. Can't see any other features than that, but we can at least appreciate a wider view of that storm and be able to see some of the uh, structures there that we have that would lead for us to think that uh, this is certainly a storm that's continuing to uh, mean business right now. Again, that warning for that tornado warning in Ellsworth County and parts of Lincoln County until 530. Got a couple of storm chasers on that storm continuing to watch that. We're watching their feeds right now as well. And we're, we're going to watch the sky camera as well, see if anything uh, decides to uh, develop from that vantage point. Merrill? Alrighty, Rodney. Well, you know, we analyze the information as it comes in on the Doppler radars, but so does the computer that works with the Doppler radar itself, and it has picked up on the rotation. You can see the rotating red circle there. That's an indication that the computer has also picked up what we have seen, so it makes us a lot more confident to tell you that there is a significant storm, there is significant rotation. It is now centered just to the northeast of Ellsworth, and the storm is moving northeast at about 35 miles per hour. Now, let me put on the velocity data once again, and it's exactly the same area. We've got some greens toward the radar, 
Red's going away from the radar. They're right next to each other, right where that red circle is showing up right now. That is the area of concern just to the northeast of Ellsworth, and it's going to continue that movement on off to the northeast as it heads toward the southeastern corner of Lincoln County. Also, both areas, of course, under that a new tornado warning that goes until 530. Ross? Well, Merrill, it's a comparison that's used time and time again, sort of like a figure skater when she brings her arms in closer and closer is she spins faster and faster, much like a storm. When the circulation tightens up, they spin faster. It doesn't guarantee that the storm is going to produce a tornado, but it does increase the likelihood that we could see something like that developing through northeastern sections of Ellsworth County. So this is a storm that originally did produce several funnel clouds in northeastern Barton County. As it crossed over to western Ellsworth County, we were still getting funnel cloud reports. Those are all the icons popping up there on the left part of your screen. And now here we are getting closer to 5 o'clock in the evening, and we still have what we appear to be a significant circulation, potential tornado danger across northeastern Ellsworth County moving right along Highway 156. I know this area all too well and know a lot of people that are in the path of this storm and we don't want you out on your front porch trying to see it for yourself. You got to seek shelter in the event that this storm does produce a tornado. Fortunately, I can tell you because we've been monitoring all kinds of information coming in from the National Weather Service, certainly our newsroom checking too. We have not heard any reports of real significant damage. We hope that will continue to be the case, but this is a storm that's far from over with and as it does continue to move to the northeast, we still have that very impressive of circulation that Merrill was talking about there. Looks to me like it's now northeast of Ellsworth right along. This would be old 40 here, 156 going northeast out of Ellsworth and a lot of circulation taking place with this storm. These are some of the most uh, incredible scans that we've had from radar since the storm started developing in terms of rotation with the storm in Ellsworth County. We'll go back over to the traditional mode and then we'll kind of set everything up for you because we've been so focused in on Ellsworth County this is the storm that's been underway and has been the most significant storm now for quite some time. The warning that was in effect for Lincoln County was canceled or allowed to expire, the severe thunderstorm warning that is, but you can see the tornado warning does go up into southeastern Lincoln County, but the town of Lincoln is not included in the tornado warning there. Looking back to the southwest now, we do have other scattered thunderstorms that have been trying to develop. You can see some scattered showers in northern Rice County, some other isolated storms popping up in western Reno County, and I'll let you see the radar in motion here. Everything pushing to the northeast this afternoon at 40, 45 miles per hour. So that's an additional challenge that the chasers are going to be up against is that storms are moving so fast they often have a hard time keeping up with it. So unless they're on a, a highway that allows them to travel at faster speed, sometimes the storm can outpace the chasers and where they are today. And we know that Ed O'Neill has been following that storm for us in portions of Ellsworth County. I also want to show you this is some model information that we look at very frequently in the Weather Center because it allows us to see where we are headed as we go through the rest of the afternoon. It's a short term model that gives us a better indication of where the storms are going to develop and where they're going to go. And as this data continues to load, I'll back this view out so you can see what we expect to happen as we go through the rest of this Sunday evening. We already have the storms in central Kansas. Now watch here. You can see the storms continuing to push to the northeast. Wichita never expected to get anything according to this short term model. Now that could change as new information comes in. But what we believe to happen through the rest of the evening, these isolated storms in central Kansas will continue to move northeast in the area that's also in a tornado watch. But for Wichita and area to the south, at least according to this short term model that has been pretty good, been fairly accurate. It's not showing anything from Wichita south. Maybe that will be the case. Maybe a new model run will come in and suggest something different, but at least for the next three, four hours, isolated storms in central Kansas forecast to move to the east northeast and there is that potential for additional hail wind and maybe some isolated tornadoes. We'll switch back over and go in on the storm that continues to be the most significant storm that we have at this hour right in northeastern sections of Ellsworth County. Tornado warning is going to take us until 530 as we get in a little bit tighter. You can see we've got a lot of dark red showing up on the radar indicative of large hail. Very heavy rainfall now moving along I-70 from the 
K14, I-70 junction there, all the way now getting into portions of Saline County. Where is the potential tornado? It looks like it's now well to the north and east of Ellsworth as we bring back in the wind mode of radar here. Once again, we're looking to try to find those reds and greens that match up very close to each other, and we definitely are able to see some of that now. We weren't able to about 20 or 30 minutes ago, but now it is a little bit better to find. Once again, wind that is blowing away from Wichita, through this general vicinity here, and then you've got the wind that's coming in toward Wichita on the back part. So this is a counterclockwise circulation here, not a guarantee that we're getting a tornado out of it, but certainly some strong enough rotation to the northeast of Ellsworth that we could see a developing tornado at any time. Merrill? Yeah, Ross, I think we've got the bead on this storm because the weather service... Just sending down the latest saying uh, they are seeing the area of rotation now four miles north of Canopolis or just to the northeast of Ellsworth, and it uh, really seems to be just about following along Highway 156 there between Ellsworth and I-70. So that continues to be the area of immediate concern as the storm continues to move on to the northeast. We still have something of a notch in there. In fact, let me uh, stop the... Uh, rotation there and you'll be able to see right in through here just to the northeast of Ellsworth and right along 156 there still a couple of miles to the southwest well there we got some new data in it looks like it's actually gone just a little bit more uh, to the south of 156 now 156 if you know somebody who's traveling on that right now between Ellsworth and one and I-70 there's probably some immense hail associated with that storm right now as uh, you can see those areas not just purples but we get into the blacks very strong indication of large hail. In fact, the Weather Service is talking about the possibility of up to tennis ball sized hail with this storm. So again, it continues to be very, very dangerous, not just in the area of rotation, but just to the north and west of that where we have these hail indicators. And so that's uh, not the good news that uh, we've been hoping for to maybe see this thing starting to weaken some. But again, the tornado warning does continue for northeastern portions of Ellsworth County and southeastern portions of Lincoln County until 530. Ross? Merrill, we can confirm that two-inch hail now because uh, one of our storm chasers, Tony Lawback, now reporting two-inch hail two miles to the north, northeast of Ellsworth. So that goes right along with the rotation that we're seeing. Large hail confirmed now out of northern parts of Ellsworth County. Pilar Pedraza standing by at the Salina Airport. She's been monitoring the situation there. It's about to get a lot more interesting here as the storm moves out of Ellsworth County. Pilar, what can you tell us where you're seeing, what where you're at? Interesting, definitely the word for it. Folks here are keeping an eye on it. I spoke with several people who are asking me what's the latest. They want to know what's happening. We are currently at the Salina Airport west of town looking due west. If you look at the bottom of this cloud here, it, you really can't tell anymore exactly where the rain, rain wrap ends and what appears to be the storm cloud at the back where a uh, funnel cloud came out begins. But there is a funnel cloud there. We've watched other Scott come and go several times from the back of this cloud in the last couple of minutes as we've been standing here. I spoke with a couple of folks who work at one of the businesses here at the airport, and they told me they watched that whole back section just descend out of the back of that cloud, just in classic funnel cloud formation. And they are now out here watching it, trying to that if they need to take shelter, they know to do so. Lots of folks out here keeping an eye on it, saying it's Kansas, storms happen, but we want to be aware. Back to you. All right, thanks very much. Pilar Pedraza again reporting from the airport there in Salina as the storm starts to move in from the west. We still have a lot of indications here on the radar that the storm is still rotating very, very rapidly. We have not had any confirmation of a tornado in contact with the ground. That's the definition of a tornado. We have the circulation from the base of the cloud all the way down to the ground. It's also been a little while since we've had funnel cloud reports, but I can tell you in looking at the video that we got there from Pilar that we have classic storm structure that we're dealing with there. Heavy rain to the right part of the picture, rain-free base to the left part. If this is gonna produce a tornado, it's going to be in that rain-free base area that we're looking at. Once again, this is radar in motion northeast, and we continue to deal with a situation continues to change very, very rapidly. I want to back the radar out and we'll put a storm track. It's been a while since we've done that. And we want to let everybody know that uh, is next in line to see this dangerous storm, give you as much time to prepare for it as we possibly can. And as we bring on our storm track here, once again, we're looking at an area of rotation that's northeast of Ellsworth, moving at about 30 miles per hour. And we show it into Glendale at 521, Culver at 537. And if and we have to emphasize if, because these storms sometimes fall apart, 
Should the storm hold together, it could be getting into Bennington, which would bring it up into southern Ottawa County just before 6 o'clock this evening. This is a rapidly rotating thunderstorm. We have not had any reports of damage, but with the hail reports coming in, you can almost guarantee that somebody has had something damaged by this storm. The last report and certainly the biggest hail report we've had all day, two-inch hail, two miles to the north northeast of Ellsworth. So this is a monstrous hail producing storm here. But for right now and what could be at least the next 30 45 minutes, we have so much rotation taking place just to the north of Canopolis that there is every reason to keep this tornado warning going. Now the tornado warning does not include any of Saline County, but should the storm continue to move in the path that it's moving now, there's a strong possibility we could see this warning push farther east to include Brookville, Glendale, those areas of I-70 getting into Saline County. It's a little bit too early to say whether or not Salina would be included because the storm looks like it's on just enough of a northeasterly path that the, the possible tornado, if the storm does produce something, will probably say stay just to the west or northwest of Salina, but going to be a close call. Let's check in with Rodney Benoit since we've got the latest from him at the Chaser desk. All right, Ross, we're watching that storm there still from our uh, sky camera in the Salina area. We've got a uh, freeze frame here to uh, show you and pick out some of the features that we're watching right now with this particular storm. As we uh, look at it here, where I'm seeing right in about here, that looks to be a potential wall cloud. We're having some difficulty in telling because we've got a little bit of rain that's kind of wrapping around it. This is certainly right in here. This is all heavy rain right in here. You can see rain free area on the uh, uh, southern side of the storm. That's where you would expect. And right there is where we have that potential wall cloud. Also have that view from our live camera here this evening. If we could take that really quick, we're going to go actually uh, Okay, we've got Pilar Pedraza on the storm there, and uh, she is still at the Salina Airport. Looks like we've got some scud cloud. We've got some scud cloud rising up into the uh, updraft of the storm. And uh, Pilar, what can you see from your vantage point there? In the last couple of minutes tried to drop down and form into a funnel cloud. At one point, it actually had a tip of a funnel that was touching the ground. We continually to see it kind of stick little fingers out. This cloud is, this storm system here is still very active. We still appear to have that one major uh, funnel that is there. And then it looks like two or three others that keep trying to pop out of the back of that storm there. Uh, spoke with some people who uh, actually have been through other tornadoes, especially the one in 91, and say that <laughs> they're a little concerned with everything going on today. It's too close to the anniversary. Things a little too coincidental for them as they're watching this storm from here in Salina. And again, you can kind of see that bubble, at, bubble there at the back of the cloud, some scut that continues to continue uh, to drop fingers down toward the ground every once in a while. Uh, we just missed it not too long ago, but right now it's kind of calmed down a little bit. We're continuing to watch the storm and we'll bring you the latest as it happens. All right, thanks a lot, Pilar. Yeah, we're continuing to watch that feed there. Again, we do have that wall cloud continues in play right now. Uh, looking at a live feed here behind the scenes, and what I'm seeing right now, I don't see anything that's touching the ground from our vantage point. Again, there is a little bit of rain that's kind of in the way, but certainly some lowered areas and definitely a rain-free base that we have with that storm. Again, that tornado warning continues until 5.30, so we've got another 28 minutes. Continuing to watch this vantage point there from the Salina area back into Ellsworth County. Ross? And Rodney, it might be worthwhile just as we touch on the radar real quick and then we could go back to Pilar's live picture there and we can address the situation a little bit closer. But here's the rotation that we're looking at just to the north of Canero. So we're talking about areas to the south of I-70. And if you're watching us in some areas, based on the track that this storm is taking, I would expect that there's a pretty good chance that this storm will stay to the northwest of Salina. It's not a guarantee because as we've seen time and time again with these supercell thunderstorms, the big ones that rotate and produce hail, sometimes tornadoes, sometimes they can take a turn to the east. And if that were to happen with this storm, the potential that Salina could be next to waiting to get word. But I believe that this tornado warning will be pushed a little farther to the east because the circulation is still very, very impressive. We'll back the radar out and bring Salina into view. So once again, if you're watching our coverage from Salina, it looks like you can see Smolin there on the radar, Salina up here, that it looks like based on the way that the storm is tracking, it's going to be close before it would get to Salina, but there is a chance that it may stay just to the west of town. But a very dangerous storm. If we can go back to the live pictures from Pilar, 
Okay, Skycam from Salina, if we can, this is going to give us a little higher view. And uh, this picture, what we're looking at, this is all the heavy rain and the hail that Rodney was addressing a little bit earlier. So this is where the winds in the atmosphere, they're coming down. This is the downdraft part of the storm where the air is rising is up over here on the left part of the screen. If you're not watching in high def, that part of the picture may be getting cut off just a little bit. There we get a little better view of it. So this is our rain-free base. So this is where the air is going right up into the storm cloud, the air coming down over here. And we have been able to pick out a wall cloud. I think from Pilar's vantage point there, we were able to see the wall cloud. So that's the view that we're looking at right now. The wall cloud is definitely not as defined as it was just a couple minutes ago. This is your heavy rain and the hail over here. By the way, we're looking through a chain link fence. So that's why we're getting the, the lattice work look there, if you will. But here is a little bit of a lowering. It doesn't appear that we have anything on the ground, but you know what? We have seen it time and time again where you don't have a visible part of the funnel extending from the base of the cloud down to the ground, but sometimes you will see dust being kicked up even though you can't see the full length of the tornado. So this is a situation that can change very, very rapidly. If you're in, please keep an eye. We will too. It's going to stay to the north of Smolin, but we're anticipating uh, within the next couple minutes that the National Weather Service will probably extend the tornado warning a little bit farther east to include much of northern Saline County. Merrill? Well, Ross, I was pointing out the last time uh, that we were not just watching that area of rotation, but this indication of some significant hail with that storm. And you can see all the pinks, black inside that, right at the top of the hour. Uh, the Weather Service had a report from a train spotter five miles northeast of Ellsworth of golf ball sized hail. So again, there really are a couple things to be concerned with with this storm system, and that is the potential for tornadic development. And we do know that we have already had reports of now golf ball sized hail just in the last few minutes, again, about five miles to the northeast of Ellsworth. So between Ellsworth and I-70 for anyone who's traveling along Highway 156 up there in northeastern Ellsworth County. Ross? All right, thanks, Merrill. This is just from a little wider view here of the radar. Once again, we're still concerned about an area that is still within Ellsworth County of a possible developing firm to anything on the ground. Our, our radar certainly indicating still some fairly strong rotation there in the northeast part of the county. We'll bring this up to the current time and once again if the storm continues moving that the way that it will, it certainly looks like the rotating part of the storm will miss Salina to the west or to the northwest but going to be a close call. So if we follow that that northeast movement, there you can see what I'm looking at here. Watch again the track that the storm is taking moving northeast the rotating part of the storm, if everything the way it is now, would miss Salina to the west. But I would expect that with an additional tornado warning that could be coming here shortly for portions of Saline County, it's probably going to include Salina just to be on the safe side. We're trying to get a better idea of exactly where this thing is going to give you some indication whether it will pass over Salina. It's really too early to say, but based on everything that I'm looking at now, might miss Salina to the west. Merrill? For the northern part of that storm complex, the Weather Service has just issued a new severe thunderstorm warning until 545 for southwestern Ottawa County. This does not include any portion of Saline County. This is more for the area where we've had some of the reports of hail associated with the storm as it continues to move to the northeast at about 30 miles per hour. So you can see the yellow outlined area here from around Tescott over toward Bennington. Although technically Bennington, you're not in the severe thunderstorm warning. You're darn close to it. So uh, stay indoors, stay away from windows. The best thing to do when you have the potential for some large hail. And yes, it just clips Minneapolis. So again, that is uh, much of the southwest through the south central and central portions of Ottawa County. That severe thunderstorm warning now in effect until 545. We're still watching that area of rotation in the far northeast portions of Ellsworth County now with that tornado warning. And we'll just, as Ross has been saying, have to kind of keep an eye on it and wait and see what the National Weather Service does as far as extending that tornado tornado warning into northwestern Saline County. Ross? Now we're just past 5 o'clock here. We've been in continuous coverage now over an hour as we watch this tornado warned storm come out of Ellsworth County and we're still tracking it mainly to the northeast. Bring it up to the current time and we'll take away our telestration here. Let's see if we can find the greens and the reds matching up next to each other. It's been a little while since we've tried to find the circulation and now we're using the Topeka radar and you can definitely see where we have the greens and the reds matching up getting closer to the Ellsworth Saline County line. So we're anticipating some additional information from the National Weather Service 
Service Office out of Wichita because Salina is in their jurisdiction, so they'll be the ones responsible for issuing any additional severe thunderstorm or tornado information for Saline County and the city of Salina. What we're dealing with now is an isolated thunderstorm in northeastern Ellsworth County. Still some fairly substantial circulation taking place there. Once again, we're in an area that is about, let's see, from Ellsworth, we're talking about about 15 miles to the northeast of town. So the threat pretty well over with now in the city of Ellsworth. We've had no reports of damage there, but a lot of hail falling around the city of Ellsworth. The most significant hail report, two inches, that was two miles to the north of town. And now, again, we're still monitoring the circulation taking place right on the ellsworth Saline County line, going to be passing through the northwest part of Saline County here shortly. We'll take you back to a statewide view of the radar. If you're just now coming across our coverage, maybe you've been busy all afternoon, you're just now finding out that there's severe weather taking place in Kansas. We don't have anything taking place in Hutchinson or Wichita right now, but there are new tornado warning popping up now for Saline County. We'll get back in on that in just a second. There's another isolated storm there in northern sections of Kansas. It does not have a warning with it, so we're really dealing with a very small, concentrated area of severe weather taking place just to the west of Salina. We'll zoom in tighter on that new tornado warning just coming down for portions of Saline County. We've anticipated that, and it's no surprise the way that this storm has been behaving this afternoon that we're seeing some additional warnings pushed farther east to accommodate for that easterly movement at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Salina officially included in the warning and as we get the information coming in here, we'll bring it up on the screen for you. This is a tornado warning for Saline County till six o'clock this evening. So we've got 50 minutes on a brand new warning that will include the city of Salina, Brookville and the Glendale area because there's still a lot of circulation taking place within this storm. It has been several minutes since we've had any confirmed funnel cloud and it's been probably 45 minutes or an hour since we've had any confirmed tornado on the ground. So that's the good news. We have not had any reports of damage from a tornado. We don't know if there's a tornado on the ground at this point in time, but based on the radar signatures, you have to keep the tornado warning going because it's a very dangerous storm and it could drop a tornado at any time. We got a new hail indicator popping up there on the screen. So let's see what we've got this from the southeast corner of Lincoln County. There you can see hail that's reported to be about nickel size around the Westfall area just within the last couple of minutes. So there's been some tremendous hail in the dark shades of red with this storm, but it's been a long time since we've had any funnel cloud or tornado reported with it, and that is encouraging news. Now, as far as hail is concerned, we're definitely getting some indications from radar that the hail could definitely be golf ball size, maybe even larger. That would go along with the report of two inch hail that we had just to the north of Ellsworth, and the storm really hasn't shown any indications of weakening so you might experience some hail up to two inches in diameter, not a guarantee. There's probably a very small swath of that two inch hail and that's probably the darker shades of red that we see here on the radar. So as you watch the radar loop through, this is the last hour worth of imagery, a storm that pushed right over the city of Ellsworth now moving through northeastern Ellsworth County into the northwestern sections of Saline County. It really looks like based on the track that the storm is taking, Salina will be missed. But we can't emphasize it enough. Storms have a mind of their own, and there is that possibility, as we've seen with a lot of big thunderstorms, they will take a turn to the right, and if this one were to do that, then Salina falls next in line. Officially, Salina, you are in a tornado warning. The sirens may be sounding across the city of Salina, but based on our radar projection, all indications that we have, it really looks like that storm will stay to the west of the city of Salina. Back to Rodney now at the Chaser Desk. All right, Ross, we're continuing to watch a couple of feeds here this afternoon on that uh, Ellsworth County storm. We've got Storm Team 12 Chaser Ed O'Neill. He's just off to the east of Ellsworth, and he's watching off to the kind of the northeast there, watching our vantage point there. You can see definitely the big storm that's in the distance. We've got a lot of rain associated with it. And here on this back side of the storm, we do have some ragged lowerings uh, that we could see here on this part of the storm. He's uh, traveling uh, east right now uh, and making pretty good time there on uh, Highway uh, K140. And he's traveling off to the east trying to keep up with this particular storm. Now we've got a vantage point that's a little bit different. It's the same camera we've been showing you here over the course of the last, say, 15 to 20 minutes. And that's from our sky camera 
in Salina. I want to show you that one because we can still look into the distance there and you can see it uh, looks like they're right above the uh, live uh, indicator right there. Looks like we've got a lowering there, perhaps a wall cloud, heavier rain off to your right. You can see the ray free base there as we've got bright colors showing up there. No rain coming down there, especially long into the west of that wall cloud. But I'm trying to get a closer look at it here from the uh, Storm Team 12 chaser desk. And yes, you can definitely see a lowered area. It's kind of been kind of ragged here over the last uh, few minutes, kind of reforming and dissipating now, kind of trying to uh, form once again. Uh, we've got another vantage point there from the Salina Airport. Uh, Pilar Pedraza there still live. Uh, do we have that feed there? We've got the shot there and you can see definitely uh, a ragged area uh, showing up there with that particular lowering. Um, if you look there on the right hand side of it, uh, could be a little bit of uh, inflow that's trying to uh, feed into that uh, particular updraft, that part of the uh, wall cloud there, but certainly a lowered area that we have uh, right now, not seeing that, you know, from our vantage point, it's really hard to tell unless we watch it for several uh, minutes there, whether or not we've got, uh, you know, some strong rotation showing up there. And that's something you can visually watch there. We don't advise you to do that right now. Obviously, if you're in Saline County, we want you in your tornado shelters. But uh, if you're a storm spotter and you're uh, watching it from a vantage point for several minutes, you can see the uh, rotation there if it's strong enough and kind of gives us an indication of you know the severity of uh, what's going on with the uh, particular updraft and that rotation but there's our vantage point there from behind the storm t uh, ch chaser there we've got storm team 12 chaser ed o'neill still watching that storm in fact i'm told we've got him on the phone there right now ed can you uh looks like you're still east of ellsworth tell us what you're seeing there right now ed o'neill you're live on the air can, can you hear me Okay, it seems like we've lost Ed. We'll continue to work on, on that. But uh, Ed's feed certainly uh, coming in very clear there. Again, you can see that lowered area on the back side of the storm, the business end of the storm. That is a particular interest there. We've got uh, the developing uh, wall cloud there. And we're still watching, of course, the uh, vantage point from our Capitol Federal Skycam in Salina, uh, watching that storm as well. Pilar Pedraza also at the uh, airport as we're watching uh, from that vantage point as well. So uh, we're going to throw it back into the studio and uh, see what Ross has or Merrill has so for some new information there, guys. Well, Rodney, we did get a report from law enforcement a half mile west of Brookville, right off of I-70. They, too, are seeing the rotation. But we have a tremendous number of eyes that are surrounding this storm. These are trained officials out in the field monitoring the situation. Doppler radar gives us one perspective of the storm, but certainly as we hear from law enforcement, trained spotters, Ed O'Neill's certainly trained to be in the field watching this. We have not confirmed anything on the ground, and that is encouraging news. We have had several minutes pass by with our, since our last funnel cloud report, but now the tornado warning, and this is the most recent one issued until 6 o'clock this evening that does include the city of Salina, much of northern Saline County under a tornado warning, but you know, based on what we're looking at right now, we have some incredible pictures coming in suggesting that there is at least a lowering, a wall cloud with this storm. It's really tough to tell because this storm doesn't look like, at least from the video, the live video that we've been able to see coming in, it doesn't look like it's rotating rapidly, but that can change. And we certainly have the indications here on radar. This little notch that's showing up straddling the Elzer Saline County line, that's the most concerning part of the storm. That is the rotating part of the storm. I understand that uh, Pilar Pedraza back on on with us now. She's continuing to monitor the situation from the airport in Salina. And uh, Pilar, what can you tell us from what you're at today? Well, one thing about the monitoring the storm, I'm certainly not alone. Lots of folks have been kind of stopping by, checking things out, and then moving on, uh, especially also at the airport. They have a lot of folks just keeping an eye on the storm just in case it gets in this direction. Now, as you've mentioned, in the last uh, half hour or so, we're kind of seeing more definition in this wall cloud. Uh, the rain that had been obscuring it has kind of gotten out of our way a little bit. We can kind of see what's going on there. Lots of scut, uh, what appear to be fingers every once in a while poking out. We are certainly not the only ones, as I mentioned, watching this. Uh, storm chasers, folks who work at the airport, uh, just uh, folks from town who are curious and wanting to come out and see what this all looks like. Lots of folks concerned, want to make sure that this isn't coming their direction. Not too scared, really, just wanting to be sure they know what's going on and wanting to check out the power of the storm here. 
And certainly, uh, apparently, a lot of power. We have seen occasional strikes of lightning as well, although not much as we're watching this. And of course, we are continuing to keep an eye things. Um, I'm told that we need to go back to the studio right now. All right, thanks very much, Pilar. The most recent hail report just coming in from emergency managers. Tennis ball size hail now reported with the storm. That is on the Saline Lincoln County line. So even though we don't have a tornado on the ground, there is a second danger to this, and that is large hail. And you can see all of the reports that we've been getting just trickling in as the storm has tracked across the northern side of Ellsworth County, now moving into Saline County. And we believe, after conferencing with Merrill, he'll join us here in just a second, we think the storm is now taking a little bit of a turn to the Right. We caution that could happen, even though the latest trend suggested it might miss Salina to the west and northwest. These storms have a history of turning to the right, turning into the moisture that feeds them, and it now looks like the storm in Saline County could be doing just that. As you watch the last hour, notice how it looks basically more northeast, but then in the last scan or two of radar, it looks like it's starting to shift a little bit more into an easterly movement, and that would certainly be concerning for those in Salina. It's not a guarantee that the storm is going to produce a tornado, but it's starting to turn right, turning into the moisture, feeding into the storm, and so that is something that We'll certainly adjust our storm track here that we'll drop for you in just a second. Merrill, you're standing by with more. Well, yeah, and I just want to kind of uh, delineate where the storm has been moving over the course of about the last uh, 30 minutes or so. We know that it went just to the north and northwest of Ellsworth and looked like it was going right along Highway 156. And then there's the right-hand turn that it has taken. And now right over there toward the Saline Lincoln County line. So you can see where it was initially northeast, the movement is now closer to due east. And then there's the area of hail off to the north. Glen Glendale's probably experiencing some very significant hail right now. That, of course, uh, well off to the west-northwest of Salina, just to the north of Interstate 70 there in the northwest part of Saline County. The storm continuing on the northeastward track, so it continues to be a very dangerous scenario for those both instances of potential and likely large hail, and then still that possibility, what you're seeing uh, on the live video there from Salina is something that could become a tornado really at just about any time. We've been very fortunate so far. We've seen the wall clouds come and go. We've uh, had those few early on reports of some funnel clouds, but only that one report that I can recall, Ross, of uh, any actual tornadic touchdowns with these storms. We got a new report just to the south of Glendale, a tornado reported now in progress, this at 519. We do owe you a storm track, so let's take the radar full screen here because we know that the storm now looks like it may be headed a little bit closer to Salina. We'll bring you up to the current time here, and even the National Weather Service confirming that it looks like it's on more of an easterly movement. So let's show you how much time you have to prepare. If you're in Salina, let's take the storm east at 25 just to be safe. We're showing that it's into Headville at 537. 552 could be getting into Salina. So check that out. You probably have 20 to 30 minutes to find shelter if you're in Salina. We want you to be safe if you're out driving around or you know somebody that's out driving around. Send them a text message say, hey, there is a tornado warning for Saline County. You need to be finding a place of safety at once. We can confirm that there is a report now of a tornado in progress that happening just to the south of Glendale. So we're talking about areas right along I-70. We've got a couple different pictures, a couple different vantage points of the storm, both from our Capitol Federal Skycam in Salina and also from where Pilar Pedraza is watching the storm too. If we can bring back up those live pictures and we'll just emphasize, we think the storm now could be headed for Salina and it could get there just before six o'clock this evening. So we're talking about at least 20, if not 25 minutes before the storm rolls into Salina. That's ample time to find a place of safety. This is from the Salina Airport here looking back to the west and let's see what we have over here behind me and this is certainly our rain free base these are what we call SLC, SLCs or scary looking clouds this to me is not a tornado or anything developing because it's fragmented it's detached from the base of the storm but this is certainly an area that we have to watch very very closely because we've got something that's well put together here a lowering and you're saying well that looks like it may be the heavy rain too well these storms can often ingest some of that moisture up into the updraft part of the storm and that will it could eventually lead to a rain wrap situation that we might be dealing with if the storm continues to hold together but this is our lowering this
This is our wall cloud over here. So this is a area that we really have to watch. We can't forget about what's taking place over here, but this is just so fragmented that it's not as well put together as what we're seeing over here on the right part of the screen. So what I'm trying to say here is we do not see a tornado, at least from this view here. Pilar is still far enough away that it's really tough to figure this all out. But we definitely have a situation that bears watching closely as we pan to the right. This is going to be your heavy rain in the hail. That's the dark sky that you're looking at there. Hailstones have been reported to be two inches in diameter. Needless to say, that's going to be destructive in and of itself. But what we're focusing our a lot of our attention on is the lowering of the cloud to see does it produce a tornado and we have at least one storm chaser reporting to us that there is a tornado just to the south of the Glendale area. Just checking some new information. This is the largest hail report I've seen today. This is two miles west of Glendale. Now tennis ball size hail reported there. They are allowing the warning for Ellsworth and Lincoln County. That would be the tornado warning to expire. An emergency manager also confirming some half dollar size hail one mile to the northeast of Glendale. So we have several reports now coming in of extremely large hail. Tennis ball being the largest hail report I've seen today. That coming in around the Glendale area. And here's our storm track taking it more east now. If you were with us about 15 or 20 minutes ago, the storm was on more of a northeasterly path. It looked like it might miss Salina. But these storms are notorious for turning into the moisture. They take a turn to the right. And as this one appears to have done so now, it looks like it could be on a path that would take it closer to the Salina area. So if you're in Salina, we want you to be prepared because as we get closer to 6 o'clock this evening, there is that potential that this storm is going to pass right over the city of Salina. This report, 520 confirmed tornado, 4 miles to the south of Glendale, moving northeast at 30. We're showing more of an easterly movement, so there's some question there on the movement. But let me just show you the radar loop, and we'll look at it as you do too with your own eyes. You can see here the storm really looks like it's taking more of an easterly turn, maybe east-northeast, if you will. And so with that latest scan there on the radar, it's going to be a very close call for Salina. And if the storm passes over Salina, it's going to happen as we get closer to 6 o'clock in the evening. So you easily have at least 20, maybe 25 minutes to prepare for the approach of this storm. Skies are getting dark around Salina. I would expect the sirens have probably already gone off. The whole purpose of our continuous coverage is to give you as much time to prepare for these types of situations as we possibly can. We know there are a lot of concerns Concerned, concerned residents of Salina, you're watching our coverage wondering what is going on. Well, we have a confirmed tornado just to the south of Glendale. That's the most recent report that we've had. Storm tracking basically right down Interstate 70. We'll stop this and actually zoom in just a little bit tighter here so we can see, uh, get some more communities to pop up here on the radar as we track a tornado warning force northern Saline County, including the city of Salina. It's set to expire at 6 o'clock this evening, so we have more than 30 minutes left on it. There's Glendale. There's the markers coming up of the tornado reports. And once again, we are looking for that rotation within the storm. We're looking for the greens and the reds as we analyze some of these pictures. We're now using the Topeka radar, by the way. And right here to the south of Glendale, wind blowing away, wind blowing in, the circulation showing up just a mile or two to the south of I-70. So this is an extremely dangerous situation. It's been a long time since we've had a tornado report, but in the last five minutes, now getting a couple different reports, some eyewitness accounts to the south of Glendale of a confirmed tornado in progress. I think uh, the report we got was four miles south. That's where we've got it there too, based on the radar scan. And I'll let you see it in motion using Topeka's radar Topeka National Weather Service radar, we're seeing that circulation passing right down I-70, could be headed for Salina within about the next 20 minutes. Merrill? Well, not to forget about some other storms that we have out there right now. A new severe thunderstorm warning further to the north. There's Beloit, there's Mankato. New severe thunderstorm warning until 6 o'clock for north central Mitchell and eastern Jewell counties. And it's for the storm here that's to the north of Beloit. And that storm is moving to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour. Has the potential to produce 60 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Let's see if we can uh, put all that into motion. And uh, you'll be able to see that northeastward movement. The storm passed just to the west and now to the north of Beloit. Another strong storm off to the northeast of Mankato. Again, all moving to the northeast. And this new severe thunderstorm warning. No indication of any tornadic or activity or rotation, but severe thunderstorm warning north central Mitchell, eastern Jewell County until 6 o'clock this evening. Basically, stay indoors, stay away from windows, 
and everything should be just fine with that storm. Back over to Ross. And we're still getting a couple reports on this storm in western Saline County of a tornado that's in progress. So we're talking about an area that's to the south of Glendale. Here's Salina. Salina officially in the tornado warning, and you can see the circulation continues to make its way to the east at roughly 30 miles per hour. Bring you up to the current time, and we'll put a storm track on the part of the storm that appears to be rotating the, the most significantly here, and that's just to the south of Glendale. So moving east, and we're taking our track out just a little bit farther so we can give you ample time to prepare. There you can see 604 in Salina, but I would expect the storm's probably going to reach Salina before we get to 6 o'clock in the evening, so be ready for that. We're just probably under 30 minutes from that storm getting into the city itself. New Cambria at 625, so there's that easterly movement that we're talking about, a storm that has changed path now and looks like it's moving a little bit more east more so the northeast as it was a little while ago. This red box, this is the tornado warning until 6 o'clock this evening. The warning for Ellsworth County just about ready to go down because the threat now looks like it's shifted over into the western side of Saline County. By the way, we're coming up on 530. That's the start of our Sunday evening newscast, and uh, we're going to be getting some other information from the newsroom as well as we continue with our coverage here on a Sunday evening. A storm that has been ongoing now for the better part of almost two hours and we're still getting reports of tornadoes to the south of Glendale. Eventually, we think it will be passing very close to Salina. So it's time to seek shelter. If you're new to Kansas, you're unfamiliar with what to do in these types of situations, the best bet is always to get below ground. If you're an apartment complex and maybe you're on the second or third story, you want to try to move to a lower level if at all possible. If that's not an option, crawl into a bathroom, call, crawl into a closet, Put as many walls between you and the approaching tornado as you possibly can. Wrap yourself up in pillows and blankets. Put on a pair of shoes. If you're on medication, make sure you have that available to you too. Bottled water, something very good to have handy. Batteries. There are a lot of little things to think about when you're in the path of a storm and you could lose everything. Of course, we always hope for the best. Everybody does. But these types of situations happen from time to time and we just don't know if this storm is going to continue to produce a tornado as it moves into the city of Salina, but we've got to be ready and you know, we have to be prepared and you've got at least 20, if not 25 minutes before the storm gets to the city of Salina, that's when we could be looking at possibly a tornado. It's not a guarantee, but the last reports that we were getting about four to five miles to the southwest of Glendale, we are talking about an area that has produced a tornado continuing to move to the east. Radar in motion once again, tracking the storm out of Ellsworth County. The warnings are no longer in effect there, but it is Saline County that's under the threat right now for a potential dangerous situation here. We've got a tornado that's reported in progress to the south of I-70, just to the southeast of the Glendale area, and now that storm looks like it's headed over toward Salina. These are very isolated storms that have been underway today. I'll back the so you can see how things look across much of central and south central Kansas. The storm that Merrill was talking about earlier with the severe thunderstorm warning, that's up in Jewell County, closer to the Nebraska state line. Don't have anything in Rice County, don't have anything in McPherson County, all's quiet in Hutchinson and Sedgwick County. And as we pointed out, it's probably been 45 minutes or an hour ago. Some of the latest model data that's been coming into the storm center would suggest that most of the action this evening will in fact be across central and northern sections of Kansas. So this is our model. They're continuing to move to the east. We don't don't really see a whole lot taking place over south central Kansas, so hopefully that's encouraging. We'd like to escape the hail and the, the wind, the tornado threat as well, but for right now, the threat ongoing in Saline County. Once again, this is a model run that's going to take us through the evening. You can see all the big storms taking place there. It does develop an isolated storm along the Oklahoma state line, so we'll watch wait to see if that actually does happen. It's not a guarantee. It's just another bit of information that we have in the storm center that allows us to try to figure out what's going to be taking place. So big storms in central Kansas will continue to move east, northeast, and anything around Wichita or to the Wichita should remain very, very spotty if we see anything develop at all. Back over to the boat of radar so we can get in once again on that storm in Saline County. You can see it's a small cluster of storms right along I-70 here in central Kansas, but very dangerous nonetheless, especially for the fact that we've had at least a couple different reports now to the southeast of Glendale of a tornado in progress and the storm looks like it's now on a path that would take it closer to Salina. So we want you to be prepared for this type of situation. 
tornado in progress. Just checking to see if we have anything additional from the National Weather Service. And it sounds like the tornado may have lifted in the last little while. That would, of course, be good news. But these situations can change rapidly. And we still have that circulation showing up right along and just to the south of I-70 here in portions of Saline County. Bring back in the wind mode of Doppler radar just to see if we can see anything. And it's just a little bit far out from the Topeka radar, but there are still at least some indications there that there may still be a tornado in progress. Again, we're using some of the information we're collecting from eyewitness accounts, our storm chasers in the area, telling us that the tornado may have lift. We really don't know. We're going to have to wait to get some additional details from the National Weather Service office, both in Topeka and out of Wichita. Of course, Saline County is covered by the National Weather Service office out of Wichita. So they are the ones handling the warnings for Saline County. But it does continue until 6 o'clock this evening tracking a very dangerous storm that has produced a number of funnel clouds. And in the last 15 minutes, we've had some occasional tornado reports with this storm now to the southeast of the Glendale area. That's this circulation that we're looking at right in through here. There's also the concern for extremely large hail. We've had a number of reports of hail two inches in diameter, even larger. The most significant hail report that I saw was tennis ball size hail. There you can see HD Super Doppler estimating hail size closing in on two inches in diameter. So a lot of hail in addition to the threat for rotating storms and a potential tornado, a situation that's not going away what appears to be anytime soon. Merrill. Uh, Ross, we uh, are continuing to monitor, as Ross is showing you now, those storms in the Salina vicinity. It'll take you, though, up again into north-central Kansas, where we do have not just the severe thunderstorm warning for uh, northern portions of Mitchell and the southeastern and, well, most of the eastern portion of Jewell County for the thunderstorm here to the north of Beloit. It's already in Jewell County, but another potentially severe storm in the northeast corner of Jewell County, but that's going to be heading up into southern Nebraska in uh, the next 15 to 20 minutes, so it'll be moving out of our viewing area. So folks in the far northeastern part of Jewell County, you have one storm of concern, the other storm of concern in southeastern sections of Jewell County continuing to make its way on to the northeast. We'll get in a little bit closer on that activity, and you'll be able to see that uh, really the worst of the complex is out of the northern part of Mitchell County, they may be able to uh, cancel that portion of that warning, but that continues to be a dangerous storm, and uh, there is the potential of quarter-sized hail as well as 60 mile per hour winds. And I believe I need to send it over to Rodney right now with the latest. Rodney? All right, thanks, Merrill. We're watching Ed O'Neill's feed. He continues to track the storm. He is uh, right now just uh, to the north of Brookville right now. And what we're seeing here, definitely a large, ragged uh, wall cloud, at least a lowering from our vantage point here. Can't tell you, I've been watching uh, not only our sky camera there from Salina, but also watching the camera from our uh, crew that's at the Salina Airport. And over the last few minutes, have not been able to see any of those tornado reports uh, that we've been getting uh, reports of here uh, this afternoon. But uh, Right now, from Ed's vantage point, again, he's just north of Brookville. Definitely some ragged lowerings that are showing up, some heavier rainfall that's coming down here, especially on the left side of his camera. Right now, though, don't see anything that's in contact with the ground at this point. I believe we have another vantage point. Uh, guys, that's going to be, it looks like, on uh, frame sync two of our life. There we are, that crew, our uh, crew there at the uh, airport here uh, this evening in Salina. There's another look. That's from their vantage point inside the vehicle, kind of a wider view of the uh, storm there and you can see definitely some lowered areas uh, right now but uh, it is very hard to see anything at this point that looks like you know any kind of potential of anything reaching the ground and I, I certainly have not seen anything from these vantage points here at least at this point Matt what were you trying to tell me there okay uh, we're still watching though of course that storm continues with that tornado warning for uh, Saline County until 6 o'clock this evening as radar continues to indicate the possibility of a tornado about seven miles to the west of Salina. Activity is moving uh, right now uh, to the east at about 30 miles an hour. And there on our video there, you can see a little bit of a little ragged lowering there. And we've got a chain link fence there that's uh, in between there, of course. Uh, 
We've got uh, that vantage point there. We're going to continue to watch here this afternoon. Ross has got some more information now from the studio. Ross. Well, and Rodney, even the information that we're getting from the National Weather Service would suggest that it's still capable of producing a tornado. We don't have anything at last check confirmed on the ground, to my knowledge. We've had some occasional reports of a tornado in progress, but I think that this storm might be going through a little bit of a cycling phase, starting to reorganize. And we're starting to see a little bit better definition here of a notch. Doesn't always guarantee that there's going to be a tornado with the storm, but as we bring back in the wind mode of radar, again, once it just doesn't really stand out to be that classic green matching up with the red that we would be looking for, and that's encouraging news. We hope that continues to be the case, but what I am concerned about is that the storm might be going through a cycling phase in which we don't have a tornado on the ground, but maybe in five, ten minutes from now, we might see some additional reports, and that would be right as the storm passes over Salina. So we're getting closer and closer in time here. I would suspect in the next ten minutes, the storm's going to pass right over Salina. We've got a crew there watching the storm for us as well from a safe spot. If we get anything that touches the ground, we definitely know that they'll be letting us uh, hear of what's taking place there. I want to back the radar out just a little bit so we can get a little better idea, bit better idea of what is taking place there. You can see Salina coming into better view. The circulation still appears to be off to the west out toward the Headville area. And as we zoom out just a little bit more, this is a very uh, significant thunderstorm that we're looking at here across portions of northern Saline County. You can see we've got a storm coming in from the south West that's meeting up. So storm merger is taking place right now in northern Saline County. And so the sirens are sounding in the city of Salina right now. What's happening when you get storms that merge like this? There can often be an interruption in the flow of the moisture up into the storm. So like I said, the storm could be cycling right now where it's not producing a tornado. And then later on, once the storm gets better organized, sometimes it will produce additional tornadoes. But look at the live picture. This is about all that we need to continue to watch for the next 10 to 15 minutes to see because our crew in Salina is in the right place where we need them to be to see if the storm's going to produce a tornado. We can actually take that picture full and let's try to walk you through some of the cloud features that we're looking at. And over on the right part of the screen, that's going to be the heavy rain and the hail. We've had several reports now of hail around two inches in diameter. It's the back part of this storm where you see where it looks like the sun is coming out. The sky is looking like they're beginning to clear. That is the rain free base. And that is the area of the storm that if we're going to see a tornado, it's most likely going to develop in that general vicinity. It's it's very, very difficult sometimes because we will see these storms wrap precipitation around the wall cloud. And sometimes it makes it very difficult to see what is exactly taking place. But from this picture here, that dark rain curtain that you see on the right part of the screen, we believe that to be the very heavy rain hail that's embedded in there. And if there's a tornado, it's probably going to be just to the left of that very dark curtain of rain. Again, tornado sirens are sounding in Salina. We've got a pretty good path that we're looking at here on this storm, bringing it right across the city of Salina within the next 10 to 15 minutes. So just before we get to six o'clock this evening, the storm's gonna be coming on through. We'll hope that it doesn't produce a tornado. That would be the worst case scenario as it passes through a very, populated area of Saline County and the city of Salina, but we want everybody to be safe. We can just about guarantee there's going to be some amount of hail with the storm. There's going to be some tremendous rain, very noisy with a lot of cloud to ground lightning, and there may also be some wind with the storm too, but the tornado warning continues at least until six o'clock this evening for the rotation that we've been tracking right along I-70, right along those areas to the south of Glendale, and now getting closer to the Head Headville area and moving into the city of Salina, which will take place within the next 10 minutes or so. As far as hail is concerned, let's show you what we've got as far as the HD Super Doppler estimating the size there, getting a sample on the core of the storm, still coming in just a little bit smaller than two inches in diameter, but a very significant situation unfolding here in Saline County. Once again, we're going to switch over into the wind mode of Doppler radar. We're using Topeka, and it just doesn't stand out quite as classic as some scenarios will. 
but there's still at least some strong enough rotation from other views of the radar that would suggest that the warning should continue. And based on the pictures that we've been looking at there, we may still be dealing with a wall cloud at least to the west of Salina. Just trying to look from a little different radar standpoint there. But once again, coming into the city of Salina, the sirens are going off. If you're just now tuning into our coverage, we do have a tornado warning for the city of Salina, much of northern Saline County till 6 o'clock in the evening. We expect the storm to pass over the city of Salina in about 10 minutes, maybe even less than that. It looks like the rain starting to fall in the western part of the city and it's going to be picking up in intensity as the storm moves on through. Hopefully you're watching us from your safe place, whether it be a basement, a closet, a bathroom. We want you to be in a safe location as the storm approaches the city of Salina. Now's not the time to try to go out and see if it's the real deal. We don't want you to do that because oftentimes you're putting yourself in a more dangerous situation than if you would just follow the safety advisories that we can give you here. Go to the lowest level of your home. Basements are always the best places to be to try to ride out a tornadic situation. Situation. If you don't have a basement, you probably don't have enough time now to try to find one. Don't think you have enough time to get to your neighbor's house. You want to get to a small closet interior room, lowest portion of your home. Stay as far away from windows and doors. Wrap yourself up in pillows and blankets. We want to want you to cushion yourself from anything that could be flying around in these types of situations because flying debris as you would expect often proves to be quite deadly in tornadic situations like the one we're dealing with here in Salina. Merrill standing by with more from the Weather Center. Yeah Ross uh, we are continuing of course to monitor those storms in the Salina area as Ross is doing. I'm concentrating a little bit more at the moment not that it's as dangerous a scenario, but it certainly is dangerous on the storms that are up in far north central Kansas and particularly now in Jewell County. And the storm here in the southeastern part of Jewell County just got a report at 534 golf ball size tail estimated, uh, or excuse me, measured by a National Weather Service employee five miles east of the town of Jewell in Jewell County. So again, a very dangerous storm there, making its way on to the northeast, eventually could uh, make its way into the western sections of Republic County. The other storm in the northeastern portion of Jewell County, actually you can see kind of two cores on there with the pinks. They're already crossing over into Nebraska, so uh, maybe they can get rid of the uh, Jewell County portion of that warning and also uh, the worst of the storms that were in the northern portion of Mitchell County gone. That's the storm that's here in the southeastern part of, uh, of Jewell County. There we go. And let me make sure that that doesn't happen again. Uh, that storm is the one that has produced the golf ball sized hail. And again, movement basically to the northeast. Let's uh, put it into motion for you and you'll be able to see how those storms have developed. There's the first storm that was went north of Beloit. That's the one that's in southeastern Jewell County right now. The other storm developed uh, around Mankato watches that all makes its way on to the northeast. Looks like we've got some redevelopment now back to the west in the southwestern part of Jewell County. No warning at the moment on that storm, but it looks like it's intensifying pretty quickly, which means there's going to be a strong possibility it could start producing hail just about any time now. So anywhere over uh, central and eastern portions of Jewell County, continue with your thunderstorm precautions. Ross? All right, thanks, Merrill. We're just hearing from the emergency manager from Saline County. They're still seeing wall clouds with the storm. They're at least weekly rotating and that's good news because we know there are a lot of eyeballs on this storm in Saline County. So if it's producing a tornado, we should be hearing from chasers and spotters in this area. So that is at least some encouraging news as the storm moves into the city of Salina. This will likely be a heavy rainfall event, some significant hail. We can't completely rule out a tornado, but if it was still producing a tornado, we should be hearing some of those reports. The view that you're looking at behind me, that is from our camera in Salina mounted on the KSAL tower. No doubt they're continuing to cover the storm too. But as we look back to the west, we see some very ominous looking clouds. What are we looking at? Well, let's take the Salina picture full screen if we can. We'll try to walk you through some of the storm features that we're looking at here. And we definitely have some very heavy rain and some hail that it looks like would be falling on the right part of the picture there. And then over here, this looks to me like it would be our rain-free base, but we still have precipitation falling here. And it looks 
looks like right through here too. So it doesn't look to be as organized as it was say 15 or 20 minutes ago. Once again, encouraging news for the city of Salina and we hope that we'll make it through without any damage. We hope that we'll make it through without any significant hail, but this continues to be a very powerful thunderstorm with at least enough rotation to continue the tornado warning until six o'clock this evening. So we have now just about 13 minutes to go on the warning there in Saline County, a storm that's pushing more to the east now. And once again, emergency managers telling us that their reports coming into the office would suggest that there's a wall cloud with it, but not a tornado on the ground. Certainly good news for Saline County. Back over to the radar we go. As we show you how things continue to progress, we are tracking with a, a heavy focus here on this Saline County storm because it's been ongoing now for the better part of two hours. Storm that started in Barton County, we tracked it across the entire Ellsworth County vicinity, and now approaching six o'clock in the evening, we've got some pretty intense thunderstorms about ready to move through the city of Salina, still with a tornado warning that will take us until the top of the hour. And there's still that threat for some large hail with this storm as it continues to move in. We've had a couple storms move in from the southwest that have merged here in western Saline County. And as far as hail is concerned, once again, we'll try to bring in a sample of what we're looking at here for hail. Looks like it's come down just a little bit there. And lightning, it's been a while since we've talked about that. There's still quite a bit of lightning taking place with this storm across portions of Saline County. So southern Ottawa County down into Saline County, just within the last little while, we've had a lot of lightning lightning being indicated that just goes along with the danger of thunderstorms as we track them through the central part of Kansas this evening. As far as is concerned, we don't expect this to be a long night of severe weather. That's the good news. We're dealing with isolated storms across central and northern Kansas. Hail, wind, tornadoes have all been reported. There's not much going on in south central Kansas right now. If something were to pop up in the next two or three hours, it will pose a risk of producing some hail and wind, but things are quiet around Hutchita right now. And as we bring in that future track radar that we looked at a little while ago through the rest of the evening and into the overnight hours, it still develops an isolated storm to the south of Wichita. You see this big cluster of storms across central and northern Kansas. But as we get past the midnight hour, we expect an overall weakening in storms. And by early tomorrow morning, most of the storms are long gone. So we're looking at a window of opportunity for severe weather for about the next five to six hours and then beyond that there should be an overall weakening trend and almost all of the storms that we're looking at across Kansas. But for the next two to three hours, still watching the potential of some very dangerous storms across central and northern Kansas. Again, this is future radar showing most of that cluster of storm activity moving across central and northern Kansas. Back over to Merrill. Alrighty, Ross, and uh, this just in from the National Weather Service, a new severe thunderstorm warning for, and I mentioned this just a couple minutes ago, for Western Republic County until 6.30, severe storm near Formoso, moving northeast to 25 miles an hour. That's the storm here off to the southeast of Mankato, getting ready to move in. You can see the leading edge of the rainfall moving into the western portion of Republic County right now. Again, that severe thunderstorm warning will go until 6.30 this evening. Also, in the last few minutes, we've seen a new storm developing just to the east of Osborne, now impinging on the western portions of, of uh, Wakanda Lake, and that's going to continue on off to the east-northeast. Also, no warning with that storm as of the moment, but it has been a rapidly in intensifying storm, so we'll have to keep a very close watch on that one. We also have a, a new severe thunderstorm warning now out for the southeastern portions of Ottawa County for the storms that are moving along and uh both sides, both north and south of Interstate 70, but it storms to the north of the interstate where we'll likely have some very large hail falling right now over, uh, it's actually I-135 there to the north of I-70, and we could be looking at uh, upwards of golf ball sized hail with that storm. With more from the Chaser Desk, let's send it over to Rodney. All right, Merrill, we're watching our uh, cameras there in those locations. Right now we've got Ed O'Neill, he's near, uh, he's rather near Brookville, and it's got a lot of rainfall ongoing at right now as we speak, but uh, have had at times a little bit of lowerings in the last half hour or so. Right now, though, the vantage point that we have really can't see much uh, of note at this point. He's kind of in an area where we're seeing some redevelopment taking place. We've had some stronger storms develop now off to the southwest of Salina. What does that mean as far as the overall vantage point? Let's take a look at our uh, Salina sky camera. I want to point out a couple of features there. You can see uh, now as we're looking uh, generally to the uh, southwest 
and west southwest of Salina. If you note there, right above ground level, we've got these horizontal clouds that are feeding into the storm. That's some inflow uh, moisture that's coming back into the storm, and we're starting to see now, if you look there on the right side of your screen, you see some heavier rainfall that's coming down. Again, that's on the right-hand side of your screen, and then what we see right about in the middle is a little rain-free area. Now, I have not seen anything as far as lowerings or anything like that, but this is kind of developing here in the last, say, 10 to 15 minutes. And I've got my fingers crossed here, both fingers, that the uh, camera feed uh, continues to come in this evening. That's some intermittent uh, dropouts at times, so we're watching that closely. But uh, our Storm Team 12 chaser, Ed O'Neill, we were talking about him just a second ago. He's near Brookville. Uh, Ed, you were reporting a little bit of hail earlier. What size did you see there from your vantage point? Uh, it was uh, at first it was quarter inch, and then just uh, within the last uh, minute or so, it got close to an inch, but it's let up now. Okay, Ed reporting uh, nearly quarter size hail there from his vantage point there. Again, he is uh, very close to the Brookville area, and there's his uh, video uh, once again. You can see a lot of rainfall. It's coming down there on his uh, windshield there, but some quarter size tail. The most recent report Ed has seen. We're going to watch, uh, guys, this storm very, very carefully here. Uh, really trying to organize once again off to the west southwest of Salina and should anything touch down there, Ed is all over it there from his vantage point. Also can tell you Storm Team 12 chaser Tony Lawback is still in the area uh, watching that part of the storm as well. We'll throw it back to the studio, guys. All right, thanks, Rodney. Of course, we'll be checking in him periodically throughout the evening. Just get you back into the storm here in Saline County as it gets ready to pass over the city of Salina, still with a tornado warning in effect until the top of the hour. That is the most recent tornado warning that we've had. I'm not anticipating a lot of tornado warnings here this evening. That is the good news. This storm has basically produced at least a few tornadoes in the last two to three hours, one of which in the last report of a tornado we had was just to the south of Glendale, but now that's the storm that's closing in on Salina. The rain certainly picking up in intensity. We're going to have a lot of lightning. We're going to have some gusty winds. All of the typical things you find with a severe thunderstorm in Kansas, but what we're concerned about are these occasional reports of lowerings. We get a wall cloud. Occasionally we get a funnel cloud and at least a couple different times over the last two to three hours, we've had some brief tornadoes. Hopefully the storm will pass right over the city of Salina. We don't have any damage, but there is a significant storm now passing through the city of Salina. So no doubt we're probably going to have some very heavy rainfall. We have a wonderful picture there from our SkyCam in Salina, kind of giving us a first-hand account of what is actually taking place. Once again, the tornado warning is set to go down at 6 o'clock this evening. We'll continue to check in with the National Weather Service to see what their plans are beyond 6 o'clock in the evening. But as we switch over to the wind mode of Doppler radar, there are still some suspect areas in here, one of which would be down here just to the west of Smolin. Another area of concern would be, looks to me, just north of I-70 to the north of Salina. So there are some interesting areas that we're looking at. Not a guarantee that we've got a tornado with this, uh, but at least two different areas that I'm looking at now, both north and to the southwest of Salina, that will bear watching at least through the next 15 to 20 minutes. Pilar Pedraza continues to monitor the storm from Salina. Pilar, what's the latest there? Well, we have definitely noticed a change in the uh, conditions here as the storm has moved in. We are getting spitting rain now here at the airport just every once in a while, and the wind has really picked up. It's a lot stronger than it was when we first got here. If you look, this is the way we were looking when we first got here. That almost looks clear except for the cloud in the sky, but as we move to the north, you can see that darkening, and this is the direction that the storm is taking. It's moving north of the airport towards Salina. Several folks have come out here to kind of watch the storm as it passes by. We do have lightning, which has become an issue. We've heard some thunder occasionally, which tells us that lightning is close. Uh, so that may be a concern as well to watch out for with this storm. Again, the storm is starting to move into Salina. We're starting to see a change in conditions here as the storm gets closer. Back to you. Okay, I think what we probably should point out what Pilar is looking at there is she's looking more to the north because the airport is to the north of town. So she would be looking at a possible rotation here. And then there's a second area that we really need to watch back here to the west of Smolin. So two different areas that we're going to have to closely monitor, one north of Salina, one back to the southwest of town. Salina certainly not in the clear. The warning set to expire at 6 o'clock may be extended based on some of the most recent scans from the radar. Merrill.
Well, Ross, just a few moments ago, I was talking about the storm that seemed to be intensifying rapidly to the east of Osborne. We now have a severe thunderstorm warning for east central portions of Osborne, northern portions of Mitchell County. You can see that storm just to the south of uh, the west end of Wakanda Lake, and it's moving to the northeast at about 20, uh, excuse me, at about 30 miles per hour. So folks over the northern half of, M of Mitchell County should stay alert for the possibility of that storm moving into your area. It could produce up to a half dollar sized hail. 60 mile per hour winds also possible with that storm. We still have the warnings that are out for uh, eastern portions of uh, Jewell County, the western sections of Republic County, and then that other warning for northeastern Jewell County. That one they may be able to uh, let it go here in the next several minutes because the portion of the storm that prompted the severe thunderstorm warning has moved on up into Nebraska now. And then we, of course, have the storms that uh, Ross is detailing for you now right around the Salina area. Some hail has been reported to the south of Minneapolis with the storms here over the southern portions of Ottawa County, where we do still have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings uh, in effect, basically for most of the southern sections of Ottawa County at this point in time. And those will be continuing at least until the bottom of the hour. So still a very dangerous situation in that area. Ross? And Merrill, they are getting a report of some golf ball size hail now just to the southwest of Culver in Ottawa County. So we've had a lot of hail reported with these storms, some occasional tornado reports, but most dangerous right now as we continue to watch these storms moving through northern Saline County. We're not taking away from the fact that the other storms are dangerous too, but this one is the only one that has a tornado warning with it. And we've got two different areas we pointed out earlier with possible rotation, both north of I-70 to the north of Salina, and then another one back here to the west of Smolin that we're really watching very, very closely. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the tornado warning extended for Saline County based on what we're looking at there. So we've got a big red blob showing up here on the radar embedded in here. Very large hail could be in excess of two inches in diameter. Tremendous rainfall, dangerous lighting, all of those classic ingredients coming together for severe weather this evening here in central Kansas. And we'll shift the radar view just a little bit farther to the east and remind you that if you're in the path of a tornado worn storm, you need to get below ground if at all possible. So we've got a storm straddling the Ottawa Saline County line right now. Saline County, the only county in Kansas with a tornado warning with it. But you can see that movement storms coming in from the southwest merging with this Saline County storm and they extend up into portions of Ottawa County. So this is going to be a difficult night driving down I-70, especially in Saline County for right now. Storms holding together, getting east of there are going to pose some problems for motorists on I-70 in Dickinson County probably in the next 45 minutes to one hour. But for right now, two different suspect areas of Saline County for possible rotation. We've got one to the north of town that may eventually get absorbed by the heavy rain and the hail and no longer be a threat for tornadic development. But this area on the south part of the storm now looks like it's getting better defined and there popping up new tornado warning now for north central and northeastern Saline County. We've got it now. It's uh, going to go until... Uh, let's check the time on that. I believe it's going to go till 645 this evening. So 45 minutes now on a new tornado warning being issued for Salina north central northeastern sections of Saline County will bring you up to the current time. I think what we're most concerned about right now is what's developing on the south part of this storm back here to the south and west of Salina. So in our live shot just a couple minutes ago, she was talking about what she was seeing to the north, but we're going to have to turn our attention back to the south. It's this fractured looking part of the storm to the south of Salina that could be of utmost concern. And as we bring back in the traditional mode of the wind, we're looking for the greens and the reds matching up right next to each other and there you can see it just to the north of Smolin. We're using the Topeka radar because it appears to be closer to the storm than Wichita right now. But there you can see to the north of Smolin. We've got the circulation showing up right there to the north of town. We'll give you an idea of what kind of distance we're talking about from Smolin north. And uh, we're looking at an area that would be about four to five miles to the north northwest of town or from the city of Salina down about seven miles to the southwest of town. So there you've got it across the central part of Saline County. And as you watch the radar in review over the last hour, 
We see the circulation getting a little stronger here as it continues to move to the northeast. Salina, you're getting some very heavy rainfall, some gusty winds too, but now it looks like if we're going to see a developing tornado out of this, it would most likely happen back to the southwest side of Salina and could impact the city in the next, uh, say, 15 to 20 minutes or so. Let's go back over to Rodney standing by at the chaser desk. Well, Ross, we're watching still those two feeds from our Salina Sky Camera and also Storm Team 12 chaser Ed O'Neill. He's just to the east of Brookville and he's traveling up to the north and east towards the Salida area. And what we're seeing on the back side of the storm, you definitely see a large lowering here, rather ragged. There is some rain in there. In fact, he's getting some rain on the roadway as he's traveling there towards it. But you can see definitely a large area here as we get that tree out of the way. You can see this area right now where we've got certainly uh, some lowered area uh, showing up there with that part of the storm. Now the other vantage point again to the north and east of the camera as we're looking from the Salina area right down uh, from uh, the KSAL tower back to the west southwest towards that area where we've got some lowering taking place uh, with that. In fact, um, looks like we lost our camera. Guys, any chance we can take uh, frame sync one? We can show from our camera there. We're going to take a couple of minutes there. There we go. Still at the airport as a Pilar and her crew, they're looking at the northern part of the storm. Their camera that's inside the vehicle is pointing to the south and west. And you can see that rain-free area there off to the south and west of the camera right now. So that will be the area we'll continue to watch there. Uh, nothing new of note, but certainly some strong rotation, as Ross was pointing out just a second ago, as he's been looking at the uh, radar data there from the studio. So a very intense storm. And no surprise that the Weather Service has extended that uh, tornado warning again for portions of Saline County until 645. Merrill? All right, Rodney. Well, we are continuing to monitor and we're looking at the Doppler uh, data, the wind speeds and directions associated with the storms. And we really do still have two remarkable areas that are showing up. Now, the one is about halfway between Salina and Bennington. I'm also looking at the uh, Topeka Weather Service radar right now. Green is toward, red is away, and so we've got an area. Oop, thought I had the pencil. Here we go. Right in through here. That is uh, basically right on the Saline Ottawa County line. And if anything, it will be just south of the county line. That's where the core of the rotation appears to be with the northern portion of this storm complex. The other one not as well defined here just there's the salina airport just to the southeast of that so that's the one that has the better probability in fact the one to the north is passing by salina up to the north so really no concern for salina with that storm but we are concerned about anyone to the south of bennington and then in the far northeastern portions of saline county but that's the one to the southwest again it's not as strong an indication of rotation but it is there so folks in salina uh, as we've heard during pilar's reports the siren going off there in Salina. Good idea because this continues to be a dangerous storm even though our visuals are not showing anything on the ground right now. Not actually even showing any funnel clouds but we've been watching those wall clouds slowly descend and then go back up and come down and go back up once again and at any time one of those could end up down on the ground. Ross you have some more. All right, thanks, Merrill. As we continue to set the stage for you as we work our way now past 6 o'clock in the evening, just to update you on what is going on. Maybe some of you just joining our coverage, a storm that has produced at least a couple different tornadoes, and now the storm is passing over the city of Salina to the south of Salina. Things don't look quite as ominous as it did even 5 or 10 minutes ago, but we're really concerned about this area off to the north and west to small in that storm passing through Salina. And we'll back the radar out just a little bit more and show you what's going on because to the south of Salina and and south of Saline County, it's all very, very quiet. So those gusty south winds continue to feed the moisture right into that Saline County storm. And with nothing to the south of it to interfere with that flow of moisture, the storm's probably going to keep going for a little while longer. And we really don't have anything else underway as far as Hutchinson, Wichita is concerned. Some of our short term models have been developing some storms, at least very isolated down along the Kansas Oklahoma state line. But this is the main storm underway now in Saline County. It's certainly the strongest storm that we have with the tornado warning now extended until 645. So we've got at least just a little less than 45 minutes on a potential developing tornado in Saline County. It's been at least 20 minutes or so since we've had anything confirmed on the ground. 
But storm spotters are now confirming that from I-135 and Crawford Street looking west, we do see a wall cloud with some disorganized rotation. So most recent information coming in from the emergency manager would indicate that we don't have a tornado on the ground, but we have at least an organized wall cloud from I-135 and Crawford Street looking back to the west. That's going to put it on the southwest part of Salina that we've got a wall cloud. It's at least disorganized right now, but nothing confirmed on the ground. We hope that you're watching us from your safe location, whether it be in a basement, whether it be a closet, a bathroom. Remember, if you're new to Kansas and you've never been through a tornado warning before, we want you to get below ground if at all possible. Sometimes that's not an option and you just don't have time to get to a below ground shelter. The safest place then is the closet or the bathroom. You want to be as far away from windows and doors if at all possible. Wrap yourself up in pillows and blankets and be thinking about putting on a pair of shoes. Make sure that you protect your head. Don't open the windows. That's never a good idea in these types of situations. You're only allowing tornado debris to come in the window if that were in fact the case and a tornado ends up touching the ground. So if you're in the path of the storm, below ground, best bet, the next best option, closets or bathrooms and staying away from windows. Most recent information, tornado warning till 645 for Saline County. We've got a well-organized wall cloud that has some rotation with it, but most recent information from the Weather Service and emergency managers would suggest that we don't have a tornado on the ground, at least at this point in time. Merrill? On a slightly different note, Ross, uh, we have of course had a tornado watch in effect for a large part of central Kansas through the afternoon, uh, but several counties have now been dropped from the tornado watch. Certainly some good news. Those include Barber, Comanche, Kiowa, Pratt, and Stafford counties. So it's the area here between Wichita and Dodge City, kind of the southwestern portion of that tornado watch. And also in Oklahoma, the tornado watch canceled for Garfield, Grant, Kay, Noble, Alfalfa, Major, Woods, and Woodward counties. And that's, of course, uh, the northwest and a little bit of north central Oklahoma. Because although we've got a nice little boundary, you can see here this light green colored line from northern portions of Stafford County right down through the Greensburg area and southwestward uh, to the west of Coldwater. Nothing has really been able to develop along this since the very first storms that developed over Great Bend and Hoisington earlier on this afternoon. So uh, looks like maybe things settling down over the southern portions of the tornado watch area. But of course, we're still very closely monitoring all those storms over Salina and northward up into the south uh, central portions of Nebraska. Ross. All right, back to the storm in Saline County. You're looking at some live pictures here coming in. Once again, we're focusing on an area of the storm that is the rain-free base. There's not a lot of precipitation falling in these areas and a very dark, a black looking sky here indicating a lot of precipitation higher up in the clouds, but we don't have anything falling to the ground. And uh, these pictures again from Saline County would indicate that this is a rain free base, but we don't have anything touching the ground. But I do believe in the center part of the screen that could be a developing funnel cloud. It's just really tough to tell sometimes from this view, but this again, this is our lowering here, the rain free base, if you will, and train spotters and chasers are taught to watch watch this part of the storm to see, first of all, is it rotating and do we see anything lowering from the cloud? And the only thing that we can really pick out is this little feature here, which, you know, that could be some scud, some scary looking clouds that doesn't really mean anything. But if it were to form and organize into something that could eventually become a funnel cloud. So we've got a really good view of the storm kind of a front row seat. If this thing produces a tornado, you're going to be some of the first to see it as we do too, live on the air. These are live pictures that we're getting from our chasers and spotters this afternoon, monitoring the situation now past six o'clock in the evening with a tornado warning that continues until 645. We're still getting some fairly substantial rotation, both from the chasers and from the radar confirming that we need to keep the tornado warning going. See this little finger hanging down from Salina and with the new scan coming in from the radar, we're still seeing that they're very close to Salina. I know that some of you are expecting to see 60 minutes. We're staying with the tornado coverage here because it's a storm that's right on top of Salina and we want everybody to be prepared for a rapidly changing scenario that we may be looking at here as the storm is now organizing once again. We're looking at some rotation just to the south of Salina. We can zoom in a little bit tighter 
and bring you some additional information here as we see just to the south of Salina. That's where the strongest rotation appears to be right along 135 going south out of Salina. This to me looking from the Topeka radar, a very suspect area which would match up, I believe, with the pictures that we were just looking at from our chasers. So this rotation, once again, watching it in replay, you're going to see more of an east northeasterly movement at about 30 miles per hour. This is a part of the storm that has been undergoing some organization. And with that taking place, it's not a guarantee we're going to get a tornado out of the storm, but it is an area that we continue to watch very, very closely. These are again live pictures that you see behind me. And we still have at least a very dark looking sky there, some occasional lowerings, but we cannot pick out any kind of dust being kicked up down at the ground. We cannot even pick out what would stand out as a, a funnel cloud even, but we can at least see as you watch the pictures in real time, at least some slow rotation with that part of the storm. And I believe that this is the part of the storm that's just to the south of Salina, right there along 135, where we're seeing some of that new developing and some organizing rotation just to the south of the city of Salina. Just checking to see if we have anything additional coming in here. Some golf ball size hail being reported. This at 135 and K143 from Saline County. So we have had a lot of hail reported with these storms, but this is certainly a concerning area now to the south of Salina. It would be an area that would be, let's see, from the city of Salina south to the rotation about three to four miles. So if you're in this area south of Salina, south on 135, this is where the rotation is taking place. The tornado warning does continue for Saline County till 645, a storm capable of producing a tornado near Salina moving east at 25. So let's put a storm track from the rotation that we see taking it east at 25, and you're gonna see that some of the towns that will come up here Again, from south of Salina East at 25, and uh, we don't get any towns to come up there, but you know, if you live in this area, you know if you're in the path of it. It's south of I-70, east of Salina, the eastern side of Saline County. Be on the lookout because this storm has been organizing. We're seeing a little bit better definition in the rotation. The circulation showing up a little bit better than it was 10 or 15 minutes ago. And then there's the hail threat too because we've had a lot of that reported today. Some of the hailstones as large as tennis ball size. Probably been 30 to 45 minutes since we've had anything reported of that magnitude. But here HD Super Doppler is estimating hailstones of about golf ball size with the Saline County storm and this is the tornado warning that takes us until 645 this evening switch it back over into the traditional mode here of the radar and we'll put it in motion this little finger that's hanging down in the radar returns is the suspect area the wind coming into the storm it's trying to organize once again and that's why the warning does continue until 645 the sirens have been going off in Salina we have not heard any reports of damage from the city of Salina. We hope that continues to be the case, but we want anybody around Salina, especially to the south and east of the city, to continue to monitor the situation because it can change very rapidly and it likely will continue to change at least through the next 30 to 45 minutes. A lot of the big hail, strong wind continuing to be along I-70 and to the northeast of Salina, the rotating part of the storm still looks like it's about three to four miles to the south of the city of Salina. Back to Rodney at the Chaser desk. All right, thanks a lot, Ross. And we're monitoring uh, now a new Chaser feed from Storm Team 12 Chaser, Mikey Gribble. He's approaching the Salina area along uh, I-135. In fact, it looks like he has pulled into Salina. And what we've been able to see here in just the last little bit there, as you can see here, as he pulls off, and you can see that lowering right there in the middle of your screen there. That is pretty much right over the city of Salina. And he is pulling off there and making his way into town right now and we've got another vantage point now we're continuing to watch it from our sky camera there at the ksal tower in downtown salina and i can't do anything else with a camera because um well we can move it back and forth obviously but uh, our vantage point if i zoom up anymore or move it up anymore then we just nothing because that we, we're as far up as we can on the uh the camera there but uh looking definitely at that lowered area uh, showing up on the camera there, rain-free area. And there we go, right on cue as we lose the feed there. But we're continuing to watch Mikey's feed there as he's in the Salina area. Again, he had a little bit of a lowering showing up there as he was pulling into town. I'm not exactly sure what street he was pulling in on, but 
Nonetheless, he is on that storm. Also can tell you Lance Ferguson is approaching that storm from the south along I-135 I traveling northward uh, through McPherson County right now, hoping to uh, catch up with that storm as well. Ross. All right, Rodney, just getting an additional report from emergency managers of a lowering now from Crawford and 135. So we're still talking about an area within the city of Salina where we could develop a brief tornado. It's been quite some time. In fact, I think the last tornado report we had was when the storm was out toward the Glendale area, but there's been some storm merger taking place, some organization underway with the storm in Saline County, and there's still that possibility a tornado could develop at any time. Merrill? Well, we got some more good news. Uh, some folks out there just about as quickly as that storm in eastern Osborne County fired up. Watch it fall apart and bye bye. There went that severe thunderstorm warning, so that one no longer is a concern. We still have those very intense storms, though, over Jewell County, western portions of Republic County. I've also, let me uh, stop things here, uh, started to see a little bit of an indication of some rotation uh, here in the southeastern portion of Jewell County. We're going to be keeping a very close watch on that. At the moment, just a severe thunderstorm warning with that storm, but again, just some initial indications of some rotation, but we're also looking up very high into that thunderstorm so uh, it would not be indicative of anything you know tornadic being on the ground no tornado warning at this moment for that activity and then of course as Ross has been detailing the activity in and around the Salina area also that severe thunderstorm warning for South Central and mostly now the southeastern portion of Ottawa County where we have had reports of up to golf ball sized hail with that thunderstorm complex Ross all right Merrill these storms are also producing some drenching rainfall Tony Laback, one of our chasers here from Storm Team 12 indicating over two inches of rain has fallen at ice 70 and 135 junction in a very short amount of time. So that's just another danger for anybody out there driving around today. Blinding rainfall, tremendous hail. We've had some stones two inches in diameter and even larger, but it's still this appendage hanging down just to the southeast of Salina that would be of concern and the tornado warning continuing until 645 for most of central and eastern Saline County. A very dangerous storm that's had a number of lowerings with it, a lot of wall cloud reports, and we just haven't had that many tornado reports. So that's good news. We don't want that to change, but we've seen some organizing taking place with this storm here in central and eastern sections of Saline County. So it's this area, it's this little hook that shows up on the back part of the storm that would be of most concern. That's the strongest rotation that we have. And as we bring back in the greens and the reds, that's the wind mode of Doppler radar that we're looking at to sample this storm. You you can see why we're still at least concerned about an isolated tornado developing because of what we have showing up here to the south and east of Salina. We've still got some pretty significant rotation taking place in this area through here, just about three to four miles to the southeast of Salina, and that's going to continue to move to the east. As you watch the radar in replay here, once again, we've had a couple storms move up from the southwest and merge with the Saline County storm earlier, and that's created some disorganization for a little while, but the storm getting its act together, and we see some of that strongest rotation now just to the south of I-70 continuing to move to the east. So if you're east of Salina, south of I-70, please remain in your storm shelter until the storm either weekends or moves out of the area altogether. Even though we have not had a lot of tornado reports with this particular storm, it only takes a brief touchdown to last for a minute or two when it passes over your location to be some of the worst case scenario. We want everybody to be safe as we try to track these storms across central and eastern sections of Saline County. We said this a little while ago. We'll emphasize it again. We don't expect this to be a big tornado evening, a big tornado night. Most of the storms will gradually weaken as we move into the evening hours. And eventually we think after midnight, a lot of the storms will start to fall apart and even tomorrow looks like things begin to quiet down across most of the plains. But a very dangerous storm tracking through Saline County. The warning continues until 645. We've had a lot of reports in the last 10 minutes of lowerings. We get a wall cloud. That's a lowering of the cloud base. And then sometimes we see some brief funnels that try to develop out of the wall cloud, but maybe they only last for seconds or a minute or two and they go right back up into the cloud. No reports of damage out of Salina or Saline County that we're aware of. Merrill? Well, Ross, also, as uh, we've been saying for the last couple of hours now, these storms, not only with the potential to produce tornadoes, but we've had a number of reports of up to golf ball and even one report of tennis ball sized hail this afternoon and still strong indications to the northeast of Salina now and 
northeastern portions of Saline County. Also, the storm comes here in southeastern Ottawa County that's moved into the northwestern part of Dickinson County. All of these storms showing the potential for some significant hail. We're talking about golf ball, maybe even a little bit larger than golf ball sized hail with any of those thunderstorms. Still some very heavy rain with storms around the Minneapolis area. If you know anyone who is traveling right now from Salina up through Minneapolis and northward, they are going through a deluge there uh, in the Minneapolis area at the present time. Then we have those storms off to the north. Still have that severe thunderstorm warning for uh, the eastern portions of Jewell County. Another one for the western portion of Republic County. And large hail now being indicated off to the east southeast of Mankato. And then some less intense storms, but still potentially uh, could produce up to quarter sized hail with the storms here to the west of Belleville up in Republic County. All very dangerous scenarios. Best idea, stay indoors, stay away from windows with that hail and strong wind potential. Ross. And Merrill, we got our largest hail report just coming in now from Saline County. Baseball size hail now confirmed at K143 and I-135. So we've now had baseball size hail reported from trained weather spotters. The sheriff also indicating that there has been some baseball size hail too. That, those are the blue boxes that are popping up there. Here is our baseball size hail report. This uh, being labeled as the Salina Airport, but you can read here in the details that it's at 12th and 9th in Salina reported by the sheriff. And then we'll see if this other information here is the other report. Okay, this is hail that would be a little bit larger. This would be our golf ball size hail report, and that reported to be at a mile marker 94 and 135. So tremendous hail confirmed with this Saline County storm. In addition to the circulation that we're seeing to the south of I-70, even if we don't get any additional tornadoes to be produced out of this storm. We've now had some of the largest hail confirmed with this Saline County storm. Now baseball size reported out of Saline County with the storms that are east of Salina. Be prepared downstream of this storm. It's been a while since we've put a track on it, so let's do that now because even if we lose our tornado threat here in the ne next little while, We've got some tremendous hail falling. Storms moving east at about 25, 30 miles per hour. Heads up in Solomon, 635. Large hail could be coming your way too. 713 into Chapman. Large hail, maybe up to baseball size possible as the storm continues to move east at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. There have been no other indications from emergency managers, from the sheriff, from the National Weather Service that would suggest that there is a tornado in progress. So we may be losing a little bit of our tornado potential here with this storm in Saline County, but it's a monster hail producer. You know, we're getting reports now of some of the biggest hail that we've had all day with the storm in Saline County. The tornado warning continues until 645. They're probably going to let the warning go right up until that time, and we'll see what the radar looks like at that time. If it continues to strengthen, the circulation gets any better, you know, defined with the radar, the warning may be pushed a little farther east into parts of Dickinson County, but something we'll just have to monitor as we go through the next little while. Merrill's monitoring some other information. Let's you know, I'm looking, I've got a small monitor off to the side here, Ross, and we're looking at the uh, Salina. If we can go to the Salina Skycam, uh, because I think <laughs> what I'm seeing, and I'm a little ways away from it, but just on the left-hand side of the screen there, there's what appears to be a grain elevator, and there's a rainbow starting to form there. If you look very, very closely, <laughs> it really is. That is what it is. So, uh, but the not so good news is a little bit to the right of that, you see kind of a white streak coming out of the clouds and down toward the ground. That would be indicative of a hail core or hail coming down from that storm. So still a strong probability that uh, we're looking at some significant hail just off to the northeast and the east of Salina right now. Thunderstorm complex. And again, you can see things are moving away from the city of Salina. It looks like we've dodged a bullet this evening with that uh, thunderstorm complex. But look at that large area of very intense thunderstorms from Minneapolis all the way on over into northwestern sections of Dickinson County, northeastern Salina. County, still all very dangerous storms as they continue that march to the east northeast at about 30 miles per hour. Ross? And the emergency manager from Saline County is still telling us that the sirens apparently are still going off in the city of Salina, even though it's starting to look like the tornado threat now shifting east of there, New Cambria. Tornado sirens are sounding there too. This is still the storm at the hour that we're watching very, very closely as it continues to be a significant hail producing storm, but we also still see at least some rotation with it. We'll switch back over into the wind mode of Doppler radar and you 
can't miss it. I mean, this is the area that we're concerned about now, looking to be just east of line. And we'll bring on our mile marker here and show you what we're looking at. It's an area that's about six to seven miles east, southeast of the city of Salina, still to the south of I-70 and moving more to the east. So if you're watching us in Abilene, you may be wondering if that storm is going to get to your location. Well, let's put a track on it because east at 25 to 30 and what we get to pop up here to show Abilene at about 715. Now that's not a guarantee that the storm's still going to be rotating when it gets there at 715, but there's still at least some strong rotation with it to the south of I-70. And there we get some new imagery coming in on Doppler radar, still showing the rotation there. A most recent scan coming in just in the last couple minutes. Rotation south of I-70 east of Salina and the tornado warning continues for Saline County for just over 15 more minutes and then we'll wait to see what the radar looks like. There's a good chance that the rotating part of the storm might be out of Saline County by that point in time and the warning the all clear may be given there shortly. But a lot of hail. This storm has just produced some tremendous hail. The largest stones of the day. Baseball size now reported just to the east of Salina and that's the dark shade of red that you see here on HD Super Doppler indicating not only tremendous hail, but rainfall rates of over two inches per hour. We know of at least one rainfall report of more than two inches at I-135 and I-70. Merrill? Uh, Ross, another bit of good news for now the folks in north central Kansas. There has been a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for that area. It actually only included four counties in north central Kansas, but it has been uh, canceled now for Osborne and Smith counties, but still in effect for Mitchell and Jewell counties, and uh, that's in effect still until 10 o'clock this evening. Again, that is a severe thunderstorm watch that's been out since I think about three o'clock this afternoon. We still have those intense thunderstorms off to the east of Mankato and eastern Jewell County, as well as uh, moving in on Belleville now and covering most of the western uh, third, let's call it, of uh, Republic County. And let's put things into uh, motion here. Just to show you how those storms are moving, the storms down by Salina are still moving more to the east than anything else, but these storms are still moving slightly to the north of due east. You can see some storms that were in northeastern Jewell County moved northeastward up into Nebraska. Actually, one of those storms did produce a tornado uh, a while back, and all of that will continue on to the east. So folks around Belleville, uh, be prepared. We could still see this uh, stronger core that's still off in the eastern part of Jewell County making its way over toward you over the course of the next 45 minutes or so. Ross? All right, thanks, Merrill. Just recapping what we have going on right now at this hour. Salina officially taken out of the tornado warning now. It does continue for northeastern sections of Saline County till 645. There's been some tremendous hail reported with the storm. Baseball size hail is possible as the storm continues down I-70 into the northwest corner of Dickinson County. And we have not had a confirmed tornado report now for more than 30, almost 45 minutes, and that's encouraging news. But we're still dealing with a powerful storm here in northeastern Saline County. The warning continues until 645. Our coverage is going to continue on 12.2 over the air. Cox Cable 675, that's always on Storm Team 12. We appreciate you staying with us, and we'll be back on the air with additional information as the situation warrants. It's the place when I came.